George, what happened? <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm a white supremacist now. Oh, George. You either disappear or you join Comicsgate and kind of stand up to these people. And you have a lot of friends if you join Comicsgate. I would uh, be delighted. I've actually been trying to. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't have any connections, you know. I'll, I'll try to be in touch. All right, pal. All right. Take care of you, yes. A few moments later... I just gotta say this. Go ahead. I. Alright, this is gonna sound mean. I really don't like you, but I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ronnie Mike, Porter, I got, I got, honestly. I'm not going to look at anything, Sean. Uh, let me at least present my argument, Mike. Okay? okay? Cuts uh, there it is, right there. <laughs> uh, you might be seeing things in the clouds, Mike. You know what I mean? Possible. Sometimes it's just sometimes it's just a cloud, Mike. Sometimes it's, sometimes just, a it's cloud. just a cloud. I'm
диджей фраты In my way, there is a man, and that man has my goal, my ticket to the Eisner Awards. He may be the game. You may be the champion. You may be the best in the independent comics industry today, Eric July. I should know. 
But you are no Alan Moore. You are no Jack Kirby, and you never will be. Fifty years I've been chasing this dream, Eric July. Dozens of fractures, hundreds of stitches. Countless nights I bled, Eric July. You may say, this is no dream. This is a nightmare. Maybe, Eric July. But it's your nightmare, and I'm gonna decide when you wake up. It's so stupid. I don't know why I put you guys through that every day. Hey, hey everybody, it's me, the man Skyver. Uh, 31 uh, year, 31 year veteran of the comic book industry, world's most charming and disarming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Sopranos fan and trusted member of the media. That's important. I need, I need you guys to trust me when it comes to what I'm telling you as a media member. Turn this fan off. You got to get the right number of clicks to get it to turn off. Great to be with you guys tonight. Uh, it is Sunday night, the end, the end of another weekend. It's sad. We got to go to work tomorrow. You all get to go to work. Of course, I go to work anyway. Uh, you know, no matter what, no matter what day it is, I'm always drawing. I'm always getting things done. I'm always creating visions and dreams. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I what is this? Uh, Finatra must have given e uh, EVS a talking to. Do you think he did? Do you think Finatra kind of reached out to me and said, uh, dude, could you stop playing my song? Could you uh, please? Uh, I wrote this song. And this I means a lot to me. Into the pump and grind. And it's only a man of time because he called me the big bad booty daddy. Yes, everybody. Big bad booty daddy. I'm so sorry that I learned that expression in 2024. So far this year, it's been a year of violence and evil. Uh, and uh, <laughs> learning big, bad booty daddy. <laughs> so sorry, dude. When Rippa called me that, I was, I literally, I think I felt the way a pretty girl feels around the office. You know, when other guys, I felt sexually harassed. I, I didn't like the idea of Rippa calling me a, uh, Big bad booty daddy. I'd never heard it before. Not a wrestling guy. Violins are evil. Says a uh, bright green pupil. Well, TJ might think so. <laughs> uh, look at this right here. Hello, Dr. Jekyll. Says Horseman's. Horseman's secret identity is Larry Shungite. Uh, but you won't find that out for another three years. Eric, don't explain his comics to weetards. That's good business it is. You know what? That's not a bad idea, honestly. All right, so we got to talk about this. Obviously, oh, let me turn off this music. It's really good. Thank you, Finatra. Sorry for uh, sorry for stealing it from you. Uh, it's really a good song. I like it. Uh, we got to talk about this. We got some new stuff going on. Megacon was this weekend, and I got to tell you something. Megacon looked awesome. It looked lit. You know, every time I see um, footage of a comic book convention, even like the biggest ones, like New York City Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I have to say, I look at them and I go, it looks dead. From when I was there, when I was going to conventions almost every single weekend, boy, do they, they get to be tiring after a while. But the excitement of large crowds of people shopping for comic books and toys and being excited about the, the culture, 
Boy, I'll tell you, it really is great. And I saw video, I saw clips of uh, Megacon, and it looked electric. All of the uh, zeros were there from uh, uh, Geeks and Gamers and Friday Night Tights. They had a big crowd waiting for them for their, can you imagine going to see them live? I mean, you don't realize this. You know, right now I've got 1,656 people watching me at this moment. And you think about what that would look like. You know, when I'm, you know, when we're making these videos, we're speaking to enough people to fill like a dance hall, like a big fucking. And uh, when you actually see it, it's it's really tremendous. It's really amazing. So those guys had a, an enormous hall of fans that were excited to meet them. Uh, Eric July had a little, looks like he had like a corner booth kind of thing uh, for Ripaverse. And he had people cycling in and out of there doing signings. Lines of people uh, excited to uh, to meet the Ripaverse folks. I got to say, it made me believe again. It made me proud. Uh, you know, I've had kind of a negative attitude about comic books in the mainstream comic book industry now for a few years. I've really seen it kind of spiral down the drain. But Megacon in Florida, Megacon Orlando, which normally used to happen every February, it was the first convention of the year. Uh, and uh, it was great because we're all in our, you know, I'm in New Jersey. I'm shivering. You know, I'm like, Ooh, this sucks. Winter sucks. Uh, and there were no real conventions uh, until Megacon starts. And we all get to go to Orlando, Florida. And it's warm and it's exciting. It's electric. Uh, it's really, really nice. The politics there are good. Uh, the politics in, in Orlando, Florida, largely conservative. Most of the, the most of the conventions and signings and appearances that I would do in Florida, uh, I mean, that I would do in a year were in Florida. So I saw that and I, it kind of made me believe again, I might I might defrost a little bit. I might defrost. A, I might defrost a little bit. Okay, I've been very chilly uh, in my heart. Very chilly about going to conventions, but seeing that, uh, seeing how fun it was, and seeing all those cool comics and toys, and thinking, "Wow, I could be there, like um, amongst the rabble of nerds, the smelly, stinky nerds." I'm one of those. I'm a smelly, stinky nerd. I belong there. Uh, kind of made me believe. Now, I will be appearing at C2E2 in Chicago in April. So if you want to come see me, if you're from Chicago, it's not the same, is it? Why the hell do I have to go to Chicago? Why did why did the Zeros get to go to uh, Megacon in Orlando? And I have to go to Chicago. No, C2E2 is one of the biggest. It's probably like the third biggest convention in, in America. So it's a big show, but it's in Chicago. And that's... Chicago, ooh, that title in town. Trying to get excited about it. I will be excited about it. I'll set up a little bit of a booth with my pals, John Malin and Shane Davis. We'll have books. I'll have toys for you. You come over, you buy some books, you buy some toys. You shake my hand and I look you in the eye. And that's how men get to know each other. Handshakes, eye contact. How you doing? Yeah, uh, that's how you know that you know I'm uh, healthy, I'm virile, masculine. I look you in the eye, shake your hand, and I go, how you doing? Uh, just like that, it's going to be good. Uh, is that April, uh, Ethan, says Juice Cannon? I think so. John Malin and Shane Davis are planning that convention. As far as I know, it's in April. I'll go. As soon as they tell me when it is and what I need to do, I'm there. Very excited about it. I can't wait to meet some of you guys. Dumb username for $5 says, how do you work out character heights? Oh, th by the way, let me just point out. We're going to be dunking on uh, Ripaverse a little bit here today, um, but also it's going to be an art show. I'm angry. I'm actually angry today. Today's my dad's birthday. Uh, I'll, I'll get to, I'll get back to this in a second. Uh, my wife asked me to call my dad, and I was like choking with like bile. I, I saw this fucking. Uh, I really feel like there's evil in the world this year. You got Ann Coulter asking Donald Trump to die. Uh, you got the Saska sisters and the, you know, all of that stuff. And people are going along with that. Like, seriously, like incestuous devil worship, vomit, pornography worked its way into our indie space somehow. And everybody's like, nice to meet you. I'm really excited to. Okay. And then also this goddamn uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game makes me feel sick to my stomach. And tonight uh, I'm going to do something I have not done in eight years. Has it been eight years? Maybe it's been six or seven years. I don't know. Tonight, I'm going to draw Batman. I haven't drawn any DC Comics characters uh, in that long. I haven't. I've renounced them. I'm only working on my own stuff. I don't draw other people's shit. I don't do that. I don't draw DC you know, comics. 
But I am so fucking angry about this video game. It makes me sick to my stomach. I'll show you a little bit of it. We'll get into it. If you don't know what's going on, but, I, you know, I'll, we'll go through some of the... Am I allowed to show this footage? Am I allowed to show it? What is wrong with people? Every single, like, Superman, Batman, Wonder... I don't want to sound like I'm crying here, but I am crying. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, and not Hal Jordan, but the African-American Jon Stewart. Disrespected in this video game in a way that makes me physically ill. I I, I love... I, I No matter what happened to me at DC Comics, and no matter how, like, that kind of weird divorce felt where I had to separate myself 20 years of working on these characters, I still love them. Uh, and I, I still believe, you know, all the stuff that they told me about how how we treat these characters. I mean, we had great guys like Mike Carlin. Mike Carlin was there. He was the editor of Superman uh, during the death of Superman, right? Like, this is a guy who killed Superman, and he did it. He gave Superman such a noble death, and this is how to do it. If you're going to do a kind of story where one of these characters dies, they're going to come back later, right? But if you're going to do that... You give them a death with, like, nobility and sacrifice, self-sacrifice. Like Superman, after this thing, Doomsday, this unstoppable machine, plows through killing, murdering, like, this, this horrible rock beast, this screaming monstrosity. All the other heroes face him and fall. And only Superman can stand up next to him, and Superman fights his heart out. And then is able to bring him down, but at the cost of his own life. And, you know, there's a ceremony. It's a, it's a noble death. This is how these things should be done. you you got to treat these characters are fictional, but they represent something. They represent our, they represent the best of our aspirations, right? They represent our heroes. They, they're almost, they're almost religious in a way. I, you know, it's to see them, to see them cut down in this scene with the Flash gets killed and Captain Boomerang literally whips out his dick and pisses on his dead body. I, uh, I'm sorry, like, what the hell is going on? If you don't think that, like, there's evil in the world right now, there is evil in the world. There is evil uh, in, uh, you know, in, in our space, in, in our, I mean, in comic books, you know, it's like, it's uh, disgusting. It is really disgusting, and I'm, I'm actually sickened by it. And I said, happy birthday, dad. He's like, how you doing? I'm like, I'm a little numb and nerved. I'm a little angry right now, a little upset. I said, but I want you to have a happy birthday, dad. He's like, uh, you know how old I am? I was like, yeah, you're 73. Good for you. He says, I have 11 more years to live according to, you know, 11 years. That's great, Don. Oh my God. How do you explain to someone? How angry you are of a video game mistreating Superman. <laughs> I don't know. Let me read some of these super chats from you fine people here. I love you guys. Thanks for coming. 2,100 people here watching so far. We're going to learn something tonight. I want you guys to think of me as a white Bill Cosby. Okay? That's what I want you. I've always said that to you. I am your mentor. I want to mentor you. Just like Bill Cosby did. Uh, you thirsty? Any of these? <clears throat> this is picture pages, okay? Time to get your crowns and your pencils. We pronounce it crowns here in New Jersey. Crayons. Uh, we are going to learn to draw today. Dumb user says, uh, how do you work out character heights in relation to each other when the horizon line is over the character's heads uh, or off the panel itself? Well, the horizon line is always going to be the same relation. Uh, you know, okay. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, do I have an action figure here? This is Black Lantern Superman. This is a zombie Superman uh, that I, I designed. I designed this. I did the designs. This is stupid because his cape here, see how his cape is ripped up? Todd McFarlane designed this figure. He should know that this is meant to be a hand, like the, the cape is scalloped to look like fingers of a hand, that when it blows around him, they look like fingers. He just made it look like shit. Because, uh, you know, it's a hand, like the, the hand of death, you know, it's kind of the thing. Okay, so here's a figure right here. Uh, let's just say that uh, the horizon line, which is my eye line, 
The horizon line is your camera, is your is your point of view, the guy behind the camera. I do this, the horizon line moves up and down like this. Uh, the horizon line, and when it comes to uh, figures uh, on a, in a panel, uh, you see how, let's just say that the horizon line is above this guy's head, about the distance of his head. You see the space in between the horizon line and his head? Uh, it is about the, the size of his head. Okay, let's just say that. It could be anything. You could put it all the way down here, whatever it is that you want to do. But you kind of measure the distance. Let's just do that. Um, as we pull him back, we want to keep the distance <laughs> to be the size of his head. Okay? No matter how far away he is, the further away he is, we still want to make it so that one head length is above the... See that? Okay? Now, if uh, somebody is shorter than him, uh, to just adjust that measurement. So if he's, if there's a midget here, we're going to say, oh my God, like it's one midget height. It's half of his height. So it's a midget. We're going to keep that midget. <laughs> I can't, let me draw. I'll draw for you. I'm trying to explain it visually. It's tough. Blue-eyed Scorpio says, you know, Quasimodo predicted all of this. You never pondered that, the hunchback versus the quarterback thing? Uh, Katie Did's comics. Thanks for uh, Katie Did's channel. Thanks for $20. Wow. Oh my God, $20. I appreciate it. That is wonderful. Thank you, Kate. She always says the best stuff. She's uh, smart. She's on the money. She's talking about things that you care about. Katie did. Subscribe to her. She says, Hail Chad, Hail CG. Jimmy Reyes and B.A. Turner joined my stream last night. Great guys. And Jimmy is awesome. I'm so happy he's part of this great CG community. Comicsgate, everyone. Join the Comicsgate community. Thank you again for everybody's support to my channel, Hail EBS. Well, I mean, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Dumb user says, The Ballad of Halo Jones was Alan Moore's best book. I never read that one. Uh, Julio Scissors says, uh, Shungite. Uh, 316 says, I vomited in my sister's mouth. Lord Tatman's, uh, Tatman's comic says, hey, bud, how are you? I'm okay. I'm a little a little unnerved, but I'm okay. Dick DiNardo says, hi, Comicsgate. Thanks for $2. $20 from James Gardner. The warehouse is empty, but for a drone. Appreciate it, pal. Unbelievable. Thank you. Christine Venner says, uh, Uncle E, I sent you a DM on X. Could you take a quick look and tell me yes or no? Thanks. What, right now? You want me to? I will. Hold on a second here. Let me take a look and see what your DM said, and I'll tell you yes or no. Christine Venner. There you are. Uh, uh, Christine, uh, yes, for you just this once, I will put that in my, in my Twitter. Ordinarily, I don't do that because a lot of people would ask me to do that if that were the case. But go ahead and uh, tag me in my Twitter. And I'll take care of that for you. Thank you. Low watermark, $25. Wow. The biggest super chat of the night so far. If Eric July is the black, st he said he's the black Stan Lee, according to the fellowship. Oh, I see those guys. Yeah. What does that make EVS? Uh, quote, actually talented, of course. I think if Eric July is the black Stan Lee, uh, I got to be the Lithuanian Jack Cole. That, that's what I would say. The creator of Plastic Man. Uh, GC, uh, let me see, 98136 says, that's what this shit is, satanic black magic. Satanic black magic shit. Yeah. Satanic black fucking quiz. <laughs> that's great, man. I love the Soprano stuff. Keep it up. Uh, let me see, ABCD says, always be comic strong. Thank you, uh, ABCD, always be comic strong. Thank you, Vera Kusaki. $2. Suit says online greatness check. You being great, Ethan? Always. Always. My greatness, my largesse knows no bounds. Uh, Yurashima Atari says, why is PTV supporting Megacon? They blacklisted him. Uh, did they blacklist him? What happened? How did they blacklist that guy? PTP is very funny. I, you know, uh, <clears throat> He, uh, he uh, was there sucking up to, I mean, literally like fondling the balls uh, and filleting Eric July. And there's a great photograph of them together. You've got to see this. Uh, this just kills me. I'm so glad. You know, this is why uh, 
<laughs> this is why I love the internet. I'm so glad this showed up. This I laughed for like, where'd I put it? Is it up here anywhere? Let me see. Is this it? Yeah, here it is. Okay. I laughed so hard about this. It was wonderful. You know, we've been talking about PTP and his secret backroom shenanigans, whiny, uh, manipulative bullshit. Uh, and uh, yeah, like PTP is right there uh, at Megacon uh, doing what he does. He's there with his wife, Whitney. <laughs> this is the greatest photo I've ever seen. Uh, and uh, yeah, first of all, uh, all right, hold on. There's got to be a way I can make this better. Let me see if I can open this in a new tab so that we can really examine this photograph together. Blow this up. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, look at Whitney's. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. First of all, here's uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell. Uh, and he has given Eric July one of his bootleg Transformers robots that he calls Seekers. Eric has accepted it. It's in the plastic still. Uh, and Patrick is basically pitching him here. It's obvious, like, I don't know, there's something I can maybe do for you. There's a, I don't know. Uh, he probably had this plan in his head to go up to Eric July and kind of throw himself on Eric, see what Eric could do. See, Patrick is the kind of guy who can't really get anything done without a benefactor. He needs somebody to promote him. And that person used to be me. Uh, eventually, like all of these guys, uh, they start to think they can kind of do it on their own. And some of them can, you know, but Patrick is not one of those. Patrick definitely needed to be here. He just didn't realize it. So we made this plan. The look on Eric's face here, look at this. I know it's like, I can make you toys. So Patrick is super dumb. Uh, Eric July is also really dumb, but Eric is not nearly as dumb. Uh, as Patrick is, but you wouldn't know it by the look on Eric's face. Uh, look at <laughs> look at this look on his face. He's like, "What you talking about, Cracker? What you the fuck you talking about?" Now you can see Whitney over here. Whitney is Patrick's wife, and I think Whitney is already. You can see on her face, she's her IQ is higher than Patrick's. She already sees this is not going quite the way her husband was uh, hoping that it would go. Uh, this should have been a an easy deal where the two of them are now working together. I don't think it worked out too well. Uh, I don't think uh, Patrick's slimy wheeling and dealing went over too well on Eric. After all, Eric July has made it a point to say, I'm not helping anyone. You know, you can, I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm not here to promote or support any small time indie creators. That's not what I do. I got a business, I got a warehouse to run. Uh, Eric is out there trying to hire some big names if you can. Patrick is not one of those. So uh, thanks for your robot. I'm sure that's going in the garbage. Uh, is uh, Patricia taller than Eric? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think Whitney is taller than Eric too, actually. So uh, yeah, this is a sad moment here. I did enjoy it. I did get a laugh. This is how these guys are. I mean, they will immediately, like Patrick will immediately try to, uh, Patrick tried to kind of become a king on his own, like king of his own estate. It's not going to work. Patrick is a remora, a natural remora, a leech. <laughs> so I like that picture. I, I like Eric's face. <laughs> it's wonderful, man. It's great. Thank you, Patrick, for the laughs. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and thank you all you guys. A lot of people sent me great photos uh, from Megacon of the goings on. I definitely appreciate that. It was good. It cheered me up. Uh, let me see. This super chat is under NDA, says uh, Crusader Joe. Uh, Crusader Joe says NDA is brought to you by the ripoff first. Yeah, everything's an NDA with them. They think that's clever. Uh, can't tell you. Signed a contract. Blue Wide Scorpio says uh, to buy your Batman drawing. There's a $1.99. Oh, well, we'll see how things go. Uh, by the way, speaking of that, of course, thank you guys for like bidding on the stupid Alpha Core comic yesterday. That went, um, uh, that did really well. I think that sold for $375 with my red marker scribbling all over it. And we'll just continue with that. We'll proceed. I put up the uh, Ultra Star book that I did yesterday, plus the sketch on eBay, 99 cents. Looks like some people have been on it. It's already up to $61. You can get my marked up shitty Ultra Star comic with a coffee stain in it. Uh, you can also get the dumb drawing I did of Patrick's character that was meant to look like Superman. Uh, this 30 second drawing and then this little drawing down <laughs> and i i labeled it i dated it and i signed it so you can uh you can bid on that if you would like to own that it listen it's trash cast history you know it's up to you uh, i appreciate it uh soja king soja king trash cast ballers combo was awesome last night yeah we had fun 
I blew Shane Davis's mind. I, Shane Davis, uh, Shane Davis is very funny. Uh, people think that he, well, when he joins, when he joined, uh, comics gate, Cecil immediately started this rumor that he was anti-Semitic. He's not anti-Semitic, but Cecil was giving him a hard time and busting his balls. So last night I said, Hey, Shane Davis, what do you think of this? Uh, did you know that the diary of Anne Frank was written in big ballpoint pen? which wasn't invented until the 1950s. And he was already high on uh, hillbilly heroin and alcohol. And I thought he was going to die. I thought he was going to fucking die laughing. <laughs> it was the funniest thing in the world. Of course, No, it is not true. It isn't true. The diary thing is not true. She did write her own diary. But man, that was funny. I'd never seen Shane laugh so hard in my life. Uh, so uh, good for Shane. He's on, an air he's on an airplane right now. He's on his way home. That's a Holocaust denial uh, myth. You know, we're not Holocaust deniers here. I mean, trillions of uh, trillions of Jews died. In the, I mean, like millions of them, I mean, uh, in the uh, Holocaust is crazy. There's no, uh, we don't really know. Diary isn't legitimate, EBS. All right, my, uh, well, okay. I'm not going to argue with you guys. Uh, but listen, if that's what you believe, go run some of that by Shane Davis. He's receptive. <laughs> He'd love to hear that. Uh, all right, anyway. <clears throat> Let me get back to these super chats. And thank you. We're going to be drawing in a minute here. Uh, back at Tarted Balls HD, Eric July. Look at this. July uh, is right. You see what it is, is there are certain individuals that feel a particularly kind of way, so he has to move differently. And I think that's true. That's what he's been saying. Jeremiah M says, the Suicide Squad game has the same energy as Kath uh, Kathy Griffin showing Trump's severed head. The depths of depravity live inside of uh, leftist minds. Yeah, I I couldn't take it, honestly. It, it really made me sick, and it did ruin my day. Seeing those, uh, isn't that weird? I like, I like Listen, I'm not like this. I'm not like a complete and total nerd. I mean, I, I guess I am, but I, I'm not. But I, I, like, I really hate these people and what they do with the things that like people love. I, I really despise uh, the idea of them pissing on the Flash's dead body. I really don't like that. Uh, NXRD says the original rock study showed respect for the characters, but got infiltrated by woke zealots and the original team quit. We got that trash game. I'm not even going to play it. I don't play video games. I'm just still angry about it. Uh, too much 77 says I saw number one. You can fool all the people. Some of the time I saw three. You can fool some of the people all the time. Hail CG Kings F the zeros. Yeah. F the zeros. Uh, <laughs> F zero. That should be like a logo. F zero. Uh, it sounds like a jet plane from the 1960s, you know, like early 60s, Camelot. Um, we uh, are working on our uh, uh, new uh, jet aeroplane called the uh, F-0. The F-0. Uh, uh, and in a way, it would be cool because it would be like an F-0, like the Japanese zeros. You know, the ones that, uh, yeah, F-0. The uh, F-0. Uh, Luke Bat says, uh, we can thank Sweet Baby Incorporated for the disrespect, terrible writing, and abysmal characterizations in the Suicide Squad game. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Luke Bat. Neon Knight Rider says, not only do they disrespect the Justice League, by the way, thanks for being a member for 34 months, and the same with you, Luke Bat. Uh, they insulted the players by making a trash game. The gameplay is just bad. Rocksteady fell off. Uh, 200 Watt Studio, you know, now you know why I'm so tired. You're my white Cosby. Yeah, drink it. You guys drink, he's still thirsty? Picture pages, picture pages. GC98136, Barry Allen died saving creation and crisis. So they pissed on his corpse. Disgusting. Like when they found Chris in the toilet uh, with hair in the water. Uh, Kyle uh, Negro. Is that right? Negro? Says, what's really sad uh, is the game had the nerve to use Kevin Conroy's voice for Batman. What a waste. Yeah, his last uh, performance, right? Chris Benoit is here, uh, amazingly. Following Dean Cain's lead, I'll be making a comic book uh, too. My son will be the first to read it if he doesn't like it. Well, he better like it. <laughs> That's dark. Matt Six Bar says, EVS the Julius Schwartz of Indie Comics. I wouldn't mind being. Uh, he, uh, I met him right before he died. I did meet him in like 2002 or so, I think. And uh, yeah, then a bunch of uh, women, me too'd him. A bunch of women in comics said that he uh, pinched their butts and stuff. I hope he did. PTP did ca uh, Tampa because he was blacklisted by Megacon. What was he blacklisted for? 
Uh, do you think Patty was telling EJ about Gabe? Says Tiny Baby Sloth. <laughs> he takes his one opportunity to meet Eric July and he complains, gossips about somebody. That's entirely possible. Uh, dumb username says Alan Moore's Halo Jones, written in 1984, is an SJW feminist sci fi with a female lead, but the twist is she's not an insufferable blabbermouth cunt. Another Sopranos reference. Thank you for that. Leonidas says, anyone notice Eric wearing extra big sole shoes with the con, trying to increase his manlet height? Uh, there have been people pointing out that he's wearing sneakers with big, thick soles. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I mean, some people are guessing, assuming that that is because he's short. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's what that is or not, but it's an interesting theory. You know, something to think about. We've seen that recently in politics. Nightmare says, Kevin Conroy deserved a better send-off, R.I.P. Yurashi Mataru says, SS has a child, Poison Ivy and Harley with weird PDF vibes. Meow, so Sheila aliens. Uh, Steve Roberts says, uh, hey, Uncle Lee, nice to see you again in men's clothing. Yeah. Matt Var, I love the Soprano stuff. Keep it coming. Matt Six Var says, picture, picture Ute, Ute Page with Mortimer Marker. Ute Page? Who's Ute Page? I know who Mortimer Marker is. That's picture pages. Picture, picture Ute Page. What? Matt, you're, I think you might have put something extra in there. Uh, Ruby King says, you skipped my super chat. Lol, I did not skip your super chat. I'm sure I've been reading all of them in order here. Uh, Ruby King. Oh, I'm not, I did. I'm not a fan of Superman. I think he's boring, but I love how passionate you are about the character. I love Superman. Um, yeah, I do. I, I, I really felt angry about that. Sorry about that, Ruby King. Um, and two paints. I didn't think the Suicide Squad thing would bother me until I saw the video. I spent the day watching animated Batman and painting Catwoman. Did it, it bum you out? Like, it bummed me out? Yeah, I mean, it, it really did. Like, it had an effect on me. Uh, all right, let's uh, take a look at the news uh, before we get going here. Yeah, let's let, first of all, all right, let's get through this. Got a nice little story here in Bounding Into Comics, uh, which I think has kind of gone a little bit weak. Bounding Into Comics used to be a really good site. They were far right wing. Uh, and, um, you know, they were fun. Uh, John T. Trent was doing a really good job there. They hired John Delarose. John Delarose has now become like a full-time, like, rip a simp. <laughs> John, I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what you're doing. I know you don't feel this way. Everybody knows you. John Delarose. You're not fooling anyone. You're fooling zero people. It is funny. I enjoy it. I enjoy when you pretend to be, but you're not fooling nobody. Anyway, John Delarose used to work there. Now he's got his own site. Uh, that is called uh, uh, Fandom Pulse. And Fandom Pulse is a good site. It's pretty uh, far right wing, like uh, with its tone, which I like. Trevor Bruce says Wonder Woman looks trans in that game. She looks rough. She definitely looks rough uh, in that video game. And we're gonna we're gonna watch a JDA video too, just to see like what he's doing, because it's fucking. What are you talking about, dude? Uh, all right, like you wouldn't have been like this before. It's funny. Uh, Rocksteady uh, studio Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has launched, and much like the previews, the reviews are a mixed bag. Look at this, Superman. Early previews did nothing to enthrall fans. Even the mainstream gaming press loathed Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. They hated the repetitive, boring gameplay that halted the few moments of fun they had, and uh, it failed to stand out among other li uh, live service open world games. In fact, IGN would later report that they had been denied a copy of the game to review. This could have been predicted as they didn't enjoy the preview overly much with the director of video content saying, I left the preview event less optimistic when, when I came in. Even so, many others had underwhelming experiences. Who cares? All right, hold it. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League um, <clears throat> is a visually stunning anti-hero romp that's fun to play, even if the things you're actually doing are somewhat repetitive. Rocksteady's Arkhamverse comes close in style. Uh, basically, what this game does, look at Flash. What this game does is suggest that like all of the Justice League could eventually kind of be killed. These guys could have killed the Justice League with just enough bullets. Uh, this pisses me off. I don't care. I'm glad it's getting some bad reviews, but I'm seeing some good reviews from people. People are excited about it. Like this. Here's Batman's death You're gonna die screaming at Superman's feet. Why? What's up with his feet? I don't know, man. We're two for two on killing your boys so far. Ah! Love makes it worth the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you 
think you're a team now? Look at Batman. You're herd animals. Dependent on someone else to survive. Like you, Harkness. An illiterate alcoholic who's yeah, desperate yeah, for the spotlight. Yeah, 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 and Floyd's a deadbeat dad. Sharky's a freak who'll never be a real boy, and I'm... What was it? Oh, yeah. I never was too bright. Get some new material, jerk-off. You know, Joker? Used to be real good at hurting people with words. But you... Boop. Oh. Even when you're evil, you're still too good. You had a good run, Brucey. Flying around Gotham. Look at him, he passes out. Guys clean up the streets. Causing long-term mental and emotional oh, damage God. to everyone you knew. It's our turn now. After all we've been through. Oh. But you didn't think it'd be me at the end, huh, Bats? Are we done with your bad stand-up routine? Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. And it's just gonna happen. Fuck you. I mean, just like seriously, like fuck you, people who made this game. It's garbage, just garbage. Pornographic, disrespectful. Uh, you know, just ugliness. And I don't know how else to describe that. I just really find that I'm sick to my stomach over that. Evil wins, everyone. Uh, all the heroes, all the all the people you love. At the end of the day, all these characters that you grew up with, evil wins. According to the people who are in charge of protecting these characters, you, does this give somebody a boner? Like you like this? I don't, I don't fucking get it. Pornography, for the snuff porn for the Joker. That's great. <laughs> oh, it's awful. We're off to a bad start this year. We got to make things better, and I do believe that we can. But you know, we're up against some serious opposition. There is, um, there is true evil. Uh, there is true evil working against. Um, you know, our uh, modern mythologies involved. They, they, they worm their way in. Uh, they're incredibly likable people, uh, these SJWs. And they get in there and they, uh, you know, they're fine. They work with everybody for a little while. And they're, then they start to make changes. Jabez says, uh, you know, it's just a game. Yeah, I know. It's just a game. It's, it's how much money was spent making that just a game. More people play video games than they do go to the movies or watch comic books. That is today's depiction of the Justice League, Jabez. Uh, the, the version of the Justice League that most people are going to see, including children. And I know I'm sure the game is rated for uh, mature audiences, but kids are going to play that game. Uh, I think it's a problem. I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, don't get me wrong. When when you see me angry and I'm I have like a, a dour attitude about this, I I don't think it's like oh, pronouns. I'm not like that. I do care about this. This is my work. I care about these characters, uh, and um, I'm disgusted by that depiction. And my life is centered around this. Yeah, I mean, not everybody's is. I understand that, but it to some degree, it's it's got to be kind of important to everyone. You know, a, a movie like Christopher Reeve's Superman, the first Superman movie, the second Superman movie, uh, you know, uh, reached uh, so many people uh, with that depiction of Superman and I think really turned them on to uh, comic books, to DC Comics, to Superman, uh, and uh, provided them a character that they could aspire to be like. My dad wanted to be Superman. All the kids wanted to, all the kids in my neighborhood thought my dad was Superman because he had black hair and wore glasses. <laughs> he thought he was Clark Kent. I don't know. I, we don't have anything like that. We, we had fucking Zack Snyder's dark, mean-spirited uh, trilogy of films, and then we got this. That's what this generation has. And you wonder why American comics aren't doing so well. Uh, that's what it is. Um, it is what it is, guys. Uh, let me see here. Batman, Cape Crusader, and Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3 is Kevin Conroy, Conroy's last vocal performance. Oh, I stand corrected. Thank you for that. 
Uh, by the way, that's not Conroy's last. Okay, people are letting me know. That's not his last voice work. Uh, New Rocksteady lied to make sure people played the game. Thank you, NXRD. Uh, Yurashima Taru says, that isn't how Batman would act. Not even evil Batman. Trevor Bruce says, how do you feel about King Shark using a lantern ring? <laughs> it's not how it works. Oh, God. You have to be able to work the ring. Do you think uh, King Shark would be able to work the ring? You have to have tremendous willpower and a complete lack of fear uh, in order to make that ring work. It chooses people, chooses select people to be able to use it. You can't just put it on. And I did see that scene and I went, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, Gab says, and by the way, even if you were able to put it on, you would not be able to use it and make a, a gigantic shark to attack Brainiac right away. It would take some time. Gab says, John Trent also left bounding into comics. And that works with that part place with WDW Pro. Skipping the Batman, Batman death scene. I don't want that shit in my head. Uh, G1 Gabux. Thanks for five memberships. I appreciate it. Thank you. Laughing Man says there are leaked audio files in the code that are uh, that they are all clones for DLC. Batman's death was to lure Superman out. And they're covered in gold kryptonite. Maybe it's a fake story. Alec Edwards, thanks for $2. Mick Canoid. Uh, so the best Suicide Squad was in Monty Python's Life of Brian. Uh, they always looked on the bright side of life. Uh, dumb, si dumb user name says, to write a great evil character, they must be emotionally tormented in some way. Darth Vader, so cool, so powerful, but no, he's crippled and miserable. Uh, the Logical Male says, this is what I call cultural subversive desecration. Desecration is a great word, too. When replacing masculine male characters with a strong, independent woman. Uh, and uh, Comic Book One says, it's not just a game. It's death by a thousand cuts. It's ridiculous. We got to do better than this. So we turn our eyes to a couple of things. We turn our eyes to Comicsgate, uh, which is great. Comicsgate is an opportunity for other people, you know, to anybody to come forward and make their own comics. Of course, I have. My comic books are listed below. Cyberfrog, uh, Wrecked Planet is my book. Cyberfrog 3 is currently funding. Rainbow the Brood is currently funding. Uh, Cyberfrog 2, Wreck Planet, is available on my eBay store, and the link to my eBay store is in the description right below this video. Go get a copy of this. I think this is better. <laughs> I think this is better than just fucking cultural vandalism and desecration. Uh, give it a try, and thank you guys. Thank you for your incredible support. All right, here we go. Let's uh, take a look at the big story of the day. Oh, no, 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 wait. We're going to start with this. We're going to start with... John Della Rose. <laughs> John Della Rose. Horseman, Horseman is a great comic book character name for a ripoverse. Here's why. I want to know why. John Della Rose is going to get an ad for his comic book in here too, which is smart. This is what you should do. The amount of mental gymnastics that people go through to be outraged and just go at Eric July is just beyond tiring at this point. We Did you just use the word outraged? <laughs> Did you... <laughs> JDA, in order to like, in order to take this role, you have to use like their words. You have to say outrage, outrage culture. That's what, that's what they say about us. That's what they say about us. That's what you're going to say. JDA, don't ever use the word outrage again like that. Nobody's outraged. They're just laughing. You see it over and over and over again. There's a cottage industry <laughs> of like super chats for, uh, of course, rallying people up against Eric July on YouTube streams at this point. There is, of course, a whole Twitter brigade of just anonymous trolls just to like, I guess they're trying to get them to misstep or something like that. But it doesn't help indie comics whatsoever. And it doesn't help people, of course, in the culture war on this. Well, it doesn't help indie comics at all, JDA, to follow a guy who is uh, will not hear criticism. Uh, who is making shitty comic books, terrible comic books, cannot write, uh, and is putting it in people's blood, putting it in the bloodstream of the fandom that they need to defend him as though he were the Lord, uh, that he's Jesus Christ, and they need to fight for him uh, so that he doesn't have to hear criticism and improve. That doesn't help fandom. That doesn't help our space. That doesn't help our movement. That doesn't help the future of indie comics. Doesn't help storytelling. It helps zero things. You cannot get behind a guy like that. You can't do it. You have to push back on that and say, no, you are going to hear criticism. You are going to learn how to do what you do, how to do what you're trying to do better. 
Um, it doesn't it doesn't help to just ignore problems. You do have to address them uh, when there are weird things that go on, like hiring the Saska sisters, who are clearly Trojan horse SJWs who will infiltrate and destroy that. JDA, you know this. You're Vox Day's friend. You know this. You see this. What are you doing? <laughs> you have your hand out too? JDA, do you have your hand out for this guy? Side of things either. When you're looking at people in my comments yesterday, if you go through my video just announcing Chuck Dixon's new project, just going at me over it like I did something just for commenting that Chuck Dixon has a new comic out and saying that somehow like anti-Christian and anti-conservative. Chuck Dixon is a Christian and extreme far right activist. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but he is one of the real deals. Uh, he is, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say, uh, I'll call Chuck out right now. You're not as far right as I am. How about that? Beat, beat that, Chuck. Uh, but he's, he's pretty close. Well, so. then behave that way right now. Uh, we don't, you know, if we're far right, uh, we call out cultural rot when we see it, right? When we sniff it out, uh, that's what we do. And you're going to sit there and say, oh, these people are just going at Eric July for no reason. Where's your video about the Saska sisters, JDA? Where's your, where's your video about what they're up to? Where's your video about bringing Satanism uh, into our spaces? Like you're a far right extremist, remember? Where's your video about that? No, your video is just, oh, people are out there farming outrage for Super Chats. You sound like fandom actually in this. You sound like that shithead. Who's the other guy? <laughs> no offense, I like JDA. I do like him. I find him amusing, but I will correct you. I mean, I am the I am um, uh, Grady uh, in the men's room with Jack Nicholson, you know, trying to get the, got a little, uh, and I said, I corrected them. And then when my wife came at me, I corrected her too. And I'm going to correct all of you uh, whenever stuff like this happens. How's my R rolling? I'm not a Spaniard. I'm not a Latino. R corrected you. Does that sound all right? There we go. Well, he's somebody who not only does that, but he's got the talent like none other. The guy created Bane for Batman, did wonderful work on Nightwing. Uh, he has a lot of cool projects, and, he, and he's somebody who like should be supported here. But mm -hmm. the main like controversy coming out of this is about the name Horseman. And uh, of course, what people have gone to is changed it to Horseman, like <laughs> Bojack Horseman. <laughs> And, uh, of course, trying to make that sort of a horse man matters on the Internet as if it's like, oh, this is a dumb name for a superhero. Have you looked at superhero? It, it is a dumb. Well, listen, it isn't dumb. Here's the thing. Horse, horse, man, horseman isn't dumb. Horse man is kind of dumb. Horseman. All right. Throw names lately. Let's get into that, because this is actually a fine name for a comic and a fine name for a comic character. These criticisms don't make any sense and of course uh the way that people talk about them make even less sense so let's get into the news in just a moment get My into the news Rose. look i am a number one best-selling author and award-winning comic creator i've done books well for years wow and i have 12 plus graphic novels under my belt wow I've got a full superhero yeah. universe i've got a science fiction universe i've got a lot going i write in every genre i know what i'm talking about when it wow. comes to writing and of course that's why people trust a lot of my comic reviews on this mm. channel my comic review channel uh by itself too mm. and of course i've had thousands of backers over the years and now i have all, all eyes on ashley out on kickstarter now, this is a beautiful book if you want wow. something that's just a good story that you can trust well, maybe that's quality true. for dialogue for pacing for art this is it right here uh, i've done everything perfectly i just actually did the final dialogue revisions this morning uh before going on the air here and uh i am so proud of this script we did something awesome with this that you're really gonna love don't Worry about and stop with the noises, Ethan. All right, I will. I'm sorry about that. Like me, of course. Then again, uh, he did hire Smiller, he hired Smiller to draw the book. Spoil it, it's a regular sized comic. That's so not the smart thing about to do. the plot too much and, and actually get you a little. I'm glad that he can afford really Smiller's hard. artwork. I want to do that, and I'm having only raised $2,664. Awesome, and I 100% guarantee. Sorry, Mike. You want to support the culture war and real right wing folk here who are trying to make a difference. 
come here. This is quality. This is the real deal. You'll absolutely love it. That link's I will the description review, below. Yeah. But Chuck Dixon's the real deal too, my friends. And so, of course, like we have been reporting on this, and uh, it was interesting to see some of the reactions. Like I said, I got a lot of weird comments, which didn't really make sense. Now, here is uh, Joe Bennett's drawing for horse. Fucking that Chuck awesome. Revealed yesterday. Uh, I posted this up on Twitter before. Good, a lot of good other pose. Did. Really it looks good. Looks pretty badass. This is very 90s uh, esque, and it cool. looks like something that, of course, uh, people will enjoy. Now, overall, conceptually, uh, Chuck Dixon says this is like a street level hero, and it feels a little Nightwingy. Uh, it feels a little on that like a darker Nightwing. Well, to be honest with you, it feels like, uh, and if we're being perfectly honest here, this feels like a, a D level villain or ally that Chuck Dixon would have written into his Batman run, right? Uh, probably a villain that Batman would fight and defeat in a couple of issues, and then we'd move on. We'd probably never see him again. If we're being honest, that's what he looks like. And also in color, he looks a little, he, he's reminiscent of uh, the uh, Jean-Paul Valley version of Batman, also from Nightfall. He's okay. It's way better. Listen, it's way better than anything Eric July create, created. Way better. Way better. Way better. By the way, uh, on a... <laughs> It's like people who are making fun of Horseman now are, are called, uh, instead of detractors, they're called naysayers. So uh, there are naysayers uh, who, uh, never mind. <laughs> kind of edge thing. Stupid. He says he's going to bring a different take to this genre <laughs> than you've seen before. And I believe him. Chuck Dixon's doing amazing work all the way across the board. The guy is a powerhouse of writing. And again, he's like, if you want to support somebody in this culture war, look, even if you don't like me or whatever, Chuck Dixon is like the real, real deal. Support him before me. I mean, dead are there other ways to support Chuck Dixon other than uh, backing Ripaverse? Chuck Dixon writes for almost everybody. Chuck Dixon wrote for me, Cool Story Bro. He wrote something called Cinderetti, uh, which is uh, uh, about a garage mechanic. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's going to be in Cool Story Bro. Chuck Dixon writes for Vox Day. Chuck Dixon writes for your boy, Zach. Uh, Chuck Dixon writes for himself. Uh, he's everywhere. So, you know, you don't have to support the Ripaverse to support Chuck Dixon. In fact, I would say don't. You know, you don't have to do that. That's, uh, you know... Uh, I'd, I'd support his other smaller projects where his heart actually seems to be. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, that guy's awesome on every level. But people, of course, took to Twitter to knock on Horseman and all that. And here's the real Horseman uh, kicker about all this. How many stupid names have there been in comics? Horseman's not one of them, by the way. The four horseman. Of the apocalypse is the first thing that comes to mind. I mean, that's a pretty like you know dark and sinister kind of interesting thing. Uh, of course, there is. Yeah, but it's not the four the horsemen of the apocalypse. It's the four horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, and presumably, like you know, they're like death, famine, pestilence, disease. What what were the four horsemen? Did I get them right there? Uh, and they were men, like they were skeletal, creepy, like men riding horses. This guy's got a horse for a face. So he's not a horseman. He's not riding a horse. This is the problem. I'm, I try to explain this to people. I do this for a living. You can listen to me. Stop listening to JDA. He does not do this for a living. Don't listen to Eric July. He doesn't know what he's talking about. If Chuck Dixon and I were working on this, uh, the last thing that I would do, I'd say horseman. That's cool. So he's a horseman. He rides a horse. Presumably, he's one of the horsemen of the apocalypse. He is death. These are the end times. He's punishing evil. He's bringing to bear God's fury. Any of those things. Uh, that would be who he is. And then uh, if Chuck Dixon had said to me, yeah, maybe you could give him a helmet that would make him look like a horse, I would say, no. No. I'd say, no. He's not a horseman. He's a horseman. If he's wearing a mask that makes him look like a horse, he becomes horseman. As simple as that. Uh, does he have a saddle on his back? Is he being ridden by other men? Do supervillains ride him? Uh, that would make him horseman, uh, which is what he is right now. This is the this is the problem, and really, it's not that big of a deal. 
Uh, it's just a conversation. It's a creative conversation that needs to happen real quick to make all of this clear, bring clarity to it. As you can see, he's got a rook on his chest, which is a horse. That makes him a horse man. He is a man horse. Look at all the look at all the bridles and shit. See all this stuff on him? This is a saddle, stirrups. He's meant to be ridden. Uh, <laughs> ridden home, put away wet. Ridden hard and put away wet. That's what they used to say about horses. They probably still do say that about horses. It's a rook. Sorry, it's a rook. It's a knight. Did I say knight or rook? I don't know what I said. You ride horseman hard and put him home, put him away wet. That's how it is. Uh, okay, let me get back to JDA, who's angry about this. So the, the horseman like has a long track record as a name for characters like this in fantasy fiction. And that's what this is, fantasy horseman. fiction. But you get into other characters and you're sitting there like Batman, right? If you didn't just know the name Batman for the last time. Bats are fucking awesome. Bats are Halloween creatures of the night. They suck blood. They fly. They screech. They're scary. They're poisonous. They're rabid. Uh, bats are cool. They're they're black. You know, they're you know taking on the mantle of a bat suggests that you uh, swoop down and you use a radar sense to capture insects and creatures, mice, and eat them. Uh, it is a cool character uh, to uh, appropriate certain attributes onto a man. Horse man. What are horses? Uh, horses are uh, equine creatures. They're servants of men. Uh, they eat hay, uh, and they're ridden by men. They're ridden. Mostly the first thing that you think of when you think of a horse is, uh, you, you know, yeah, we ride them. That's not, that's the first thing that comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind with bats is scary. That's the first association. With horses, we think we want to feed them sugar cubes and ride them around. We want to put a saddle on them. Uh, we want to domesticate them. We want to break them, buck break them, uh, and make them servile uh, so that they can plow the fields, pull plows and things. It's not. The good thing that you think, well, horses have enormous penises. That's good, I guess. But when you add the part about him being ridden by other men, it's not so good. See what I'm saying? It's all this stuff that kind of, uh, <laughs> all this stuff that, all these associations are not good. Not good for horse man. Okay. 100 years. And somebody came out with Batman right now. You'd be like, that's a stupid name. That's a it's a rodent with wings. Nope. That's that's like that disingenuous fear or anything like that. Not true. The only reason you like think of it as this like I'm the Batman kind of thing is because of what Frank Miller did in the 80s with it. Before it, it was a campy, stupid thing where Batman would face off against just like the dumbest villains in the craziest situations in the silver and golden age. Uh, incorrect. Uh, and it was just meant for kids. And of course, Batman didn't invoke fear or anything like that. In those old stories this is he was a meant to modern sort of take on it the no it isn't the initial batman in detective comics number 27 i shall become bat father a super uh, villains or criminals are superstitious and cowardly lot uh he was meant to scare them detective comics number 27 bill finger bob kane uh batman initially if you had just gone from detective comics 27 and skipped the Dick Sprang era, when suddenly they went, these are for kids, we can't make them scary. Uh, it would have been a, a line. You would have had a, a, a pretty good connective line between um, Detective 27, first few issues of Batman, all the way to Batman Year One, Frank Miller, David Mazzucchelli, or the Neil Adams version of Batman, you know, from the 19, late 60s, 70s, uh, or Frank Miller Batman period. All that stuff kind of connects together. It's just there's a middle period where, uh, things got silly because comic books were for kids. And plus, uh, Frederick Wordham uh, got before Congress and said that they were faggots. Uh, and so, you know, uh, let me see. Horseman sidekick Camel Boy says Dave the Space Wizard. Camel Boy. Uh, Glitch, Glitch says horses are prey animals. It means they're scared. Uh, yeah, they're not, uh, they don't attack really. Well, listen, I mean, you could say you could get more specific. The thing about horse is it doesn't imply gender either. Horse is like male or female. Uh, if you call him Bronco, Stallion, Mustang, those are fucking cool names. 
uh, associated with horses that really associate themselves with like strength and speed. So you say endurance, strength, speed. My name is Mustang. My name is Bronco. You know, my name is Stallion. I'm the Stallion. Uh, those are cool. The name, the word horse, unless it's like a horseman, like I'm your, my name's Horseman. Uh, you can get your black tar heroin from me. Uh, I am, uh, I'm your distributor, your friendly neighborhood distributor of uh, heroin, of skag. You can pick it up right from me. Um, that's really horse. That's what Aim horse doesn't means. doesn't evoke that either at all. The only reason, again, it sits with you psychologically is because corporate has branded it for 100 years. We like. Let's go even further into this. Wrong. Thing. Daredevil has a villain called Stiltman. Stiltman goes out there. Spider-Man has a villain called the Kangaroo, who literally jumps around like a kangaroo. You want to talk about... Like They're losers, though. You're, you're really picking, like, uh, Stiltman is a loser. That's what's funny about him. There are so many characters that are like, I'm going to be a criminal in Marvel and DC's universe. Like, I'm going to be a criminal. Well, you know, I, um, I made stilts so that I can sneak into... Okay? I'm Stiltman. There he's a loser that's that's what's funny about him kangaroo is a loser daredevil is not a loser daredevil's name is fucking awesome his costume is awesome he's got little he's a devil which is scary he, he's dressed in red he lives in hell's kitchen uh and he fights criminals and some of them are cool and some of them are, are piss ants name him piss ants dude stilt man by the way i think is kind of cool when i saw stilt man as a kid i said that's a fun looking villain i want to read that comic book how comics actually work they're supposed to be fun and this is kind of what gets me everybody like ever since like the late 90s has been into this like everything has to be dark and edgy and super serious and super no comics. and i kind of don't like that that much and of course uh you know so I you're saying that this is silly so you're saying that horseman uh is silly and not dark and serious i would run that by chuck dixon and see what he thinks of that I'm pretty sure Chuck Dixon means for this book to be dark and serious and edgy. Horseman. Uh, Night Fury uh, would have been a better name. I agree. Holy shit. I can't believe it, guys. This is amazing. Unbelievable. Everybody get up and party. We got a special thanks tonight. One of the biggest super chats of all time. Holy God almighty. Jamal, five hundred dollars donated to the channel five hundred dollars tonight shit turn up the music let's go pack it up pack it in let me begin pack in the wind battle me that's a sin i won't ever stop gda look at this gda i got five hundred dollars for making fun of horseman monetizing horseman I'll take that punk toe. Dude, I'm sorry, guys. Jamal, thanks for $500. That's incredible. Very generous. Here is money towards the Yairo review. As a current art student, EVS, your, critic, your critiques of comic books uh, have helped me double check my own artwork. And I'm getting an A in my art classes so far. Thanks for the help. Dude, that's huge. Thank you very much. Incredible. Wow. Well, I mean, that's the way it goes. JDA, what should I do? Uh, I'm getting $500 Super Chats. Should I pretend to respect this, or should I just keep doing what I'm doing? <laughs> JDA, should I pretend to respect Eric July, or should I continue to do what I'm doing and just point out the truth to people? You know, the thing about it is, is that I'm a comic book creator. I'm actually able to do this uh, pretty easily. This is my whole uh, world. This is my whole life. I've created comic books that... Uh, people remember, people uh, appreciate. And you're here talking about Stilt Man, Kangaroo. Uh, Ethan, stop uh, skipping around on Super Chats. You're going to miss some again. I only read some Super Chats for a minute. Appreciate it. Holy cow. Holy cow. That would be a really good name for a superhero. Holy cow for the Ripperverse. Alec Edwards, thanks for $2. No comment, just $2. Appreciate that. Uh, Alec Edwards, do you ever plan to do a CGC or CBCF signing event? 
I don't plan it, but you know what? Um, I will do it. Well, I'll, I'll be at C2E2. I will be at your service, okay? I will be there to meet you. Uh, if you want me to do something like that, I will. I just have no plans to do it right now. So absolutely, uh, whatever you guys want. I appreciate you. I appreciate all you guys and your support. Leonidas says, Eric's band looks like a generic brand copy of Hootie and the Blowfish. Uh, JDA, EJ, Smiller, Dirtworm, they all have one thing in common. They're all fake Christians who like to tell you how much better they are than the rest of us, says Neon Knight Rider. Uh, Blingo's Vengeful Ghost says, JDA always comes across as a slime ball to me. I, I disagree. I like JDA, but he's I can tell when he's serving a, an agenda rather than the truth, which is what he should be doing. Yurash Mataru says, the main controversy is not the name. Um... Yeah, it's everything about it. Well, we don't know much about it yet. Comic Book One says, how much is JDA being paid? Uh, lol, JDA called you out. Horseman criticisms make no sense, says 200 Watt Studio. How wrong he is. I'm always right. Always listen to me. Bill Taggett says, uh, JDA got burr under his saddle. Uh, let me see. Green Skull says, nay, it ain't so. Ethan, nay, it ain't so. It is so, Green Skull. Thank you for being here. Uh, Storm D says, can you hire Willingham, Dixon, and Barron to write arena books? Show Eric how it's done. I've hired Dixon. I've hired, uh, have I hired Mike Barron yet? I can't remember if I have or not. I have hired Bill Willingham too. Uh, I guess I haven't hired Mike Barron yet. I'll need to do that. Strange Signal says, JDA is arguing his authority as a cover. Hashtag fraud. Uh, Broken Sword says, the rip of ours will be a hoe house before it's a church. Uh, J Drama Fan says, uh, Calvary would be a much better name. Uh, Mr. Joker 1128 says, my working theory is, uh, is this is the rip of verse seeing my girthy stallion and wanting to cash in. I did notice that. <laughs> it's like, we need a horse character. Ethan's making horses look cool. We, but see, mine are horses. I mean, they're actually really badass fucking anti-communist horses with superpowers. I don't think that's been done other than My Little Pony. I don't think that's ever been done for boys before. Could be wrong. Dave the Space Wizard says, Horseman's, Horseman's sidekick, Camel Boy. Glitch says, Horses are prey animals. Means they're scared. Uh, real name, Pio Mai. Says, GC98136. Another Sopranos reference. No One Nowhere says, The lower legs are horses' heads. It's goofy. Lower legs are horse heads? They are. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. I guess I need to see it. Uh, Mr. Poro says, objection. Oh, relevant. Uh, John F76 says, Night Fury would have been a better name. JDA is wrong about Golden Silver Age Batman, says Geek Avenger for $2. Squibs for uh, a member for five months says, I love JDA, but this is an audition for Eric July Friday Night Fights. Yeah, I, I suspect so. These guys, you know, I'm telling you right now. Speak the truth. <laughs> You're going to be better off in the long run. Don't embarrass yourself. Read my level-headed super chat, says Jabba the Ender of Streams. Thanks for $2. Uh, you got two $500 super chats. Did Yellow Flash ever get that? Says Doug1985, VA loves horror. Yeah, I think I have gotten two of them in my life. I don't know, but maybe he has. Uh, thank you. I'm overwhelmed by them. They're, that's a donation to the channel. It's just a really kind of you. Derail Gaming says the Sasuke sisters are making Goatman with a pentagram on Sheehan's chest. And Horseman uh, must be packing. Good lord. Rashmatar says, I see it too. Thigh is the neck. Past knee is the head. The thigh. Thigh is the neck. You see a horse in there? I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't know. Are you imagining that or is that a deliberate design choice? It would be weird if he had horse heads for boots or something like that. I'm looking. I don't see it really. Uh, wow. Thank you for the super chats, everyone. Appreciate it. We're going to get right back to work here. And uh, amazing. You guys see it? Do you see horse heads there? Or... Uh, yeah, I don't really see it. The knees are horse snouts. I think it's just... Uh, I think that's just cloth. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't see it. All right, back to JDA. A little bit of a flair for fun changes that. If you make it something that's not super serious, uh, it's, it's a little better on that level. But if you look at all the names of characters and comic book characters, I mean, Spider-Man's kind of stupid. No. Uh, if you look at Plastic Man, that's probably one of the dumbest ones of all. I mean, that's it's lasted hundreds of years, or nearly 100 years, of course. But his... It isn't. It's, uh, it's not stupid. Powers don't even match it. He'd really be Rubber Man, right? But right. Rubber Man might have a different connotation to it. That's true. <laughs> there, oh my gosh. Silly stuff. But that's what comics is. Comics is built on silly stuff. If you look at so like, this is silly. We are we're agreed, is. JDI. So even if we're you're agreed. Horse man, you are having an accurate depiction of what is a name in a comic book industry. But horseman by itself, again, just more evokes something like headless horseman or the four. Horsemen Plastic man's horsemen. been around for hundreds of years. So naturally, I talk about this on Twitter, and uh, they move the jo they move the goalposts, right? Remember, uh, like uh, I've seen pictures of George Washington. Uh, in the civil in the Revolutionary War, reading copies of Plastic Man, hundreds of years. Um, Mormon pioneers reading copies of Plastic Man. Plastic Man was created, I think, in nineteen forty one or forty two. Police Comics number one, and uh, it hasn't even been a singular hundred years yet. And his his lifespan. Uh, as a creation, hasn't exactly been consistent. He would disappear for, you know, many years uh, without being published. And uh, DC goes back and forth about publishing him. He might even be in the public domain right now, to some extent. Uh, but no, not hundreds of years, not even a hundred yet. Uh, this is uh, one of the haters. What's Chuck done in comics over the last 10 years that's any good? And uh, I don't, you know, go out of my way to be defensive over many people out there. But Chuck Dixon is honestly one of them. The guy has my sword 100%. Uh, like I said, he's the real deal, both politically, uh, as a writer. Uh, he kicks ass on every single level. If you haven't gotten his, like, Conan novels that he's been doing, they are the most badass thing I've read in years. They're amazing. But as far as comics goes, uh, I've enjoyed all of these. I listed right here. Hunter Ninja Bear was amazing. Uh, he came out with that. Full graphic novel that was a ton of fun. Uh, again, a name that like you were looking at Hunter Ninja Bear and you're like, that's going to be silly. It was actually really serious and like the way he actually used all three of those aspects was brilliant. Loved it. Alt Hero Q was also amazing. You can actually read most of this, if not all of it, on Arcaven.com. A great book uh, and it's a lot of fun. It deals with conspiracy. It's got like a James Bond kind of spy to it. Really cool stuff. Uh, Robin Hood, The Curse. Now, Robin Hood's for Xenoscope Comics, and what Xenoscope's done is they've taken the fairy tales and just made them all hot chicks with, like, cheesecake covers and things like that. Horse so, Man. a really good uh, story out of it. I never read any of the other Robin Hoods. I can't make it louder. It's as loud uh, as it can go. Sort of, uh, 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 demonic sort of thing that she had to fight, which was a lot of fun. Shade is another one. This is also on Arcaven.com for free. It's kind of like a, a, a Batman-style thing as well. So if you want to look at what Alpha Core being didn't like, make his list, probably is a no. good example of that. Right, Ho Jeeves. Now this is a PGA Wodehouse uh, adaptation of like one of the most classic novels ever. Chuck nailed it. Did a beautiful job on it. Uh, and of course, you know this is something that flies under the radar that people didn't get a lot of credit for. Um, because they think that uh, Eric July is uh, pointing the way forward. Uh, that's why. And they want to maybe work for him, get support for him. All these guys have comic books. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's what it is, of course. Um, it's just like my song. Begging, ooh, 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 put me back on your stream, Ethan. It's the same thing. Eric's going through it, too. Eric actually came out and said, I'm not supporting any of you. <laughs> I'm not promoting any of you. And these guys aren't hearing him. When he said that, I was kind of like... Uh, boy, I don't like that. You should be promoting some indie comics. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So, well, this is a pretty fruitless and fruity exercise, um, but they're still doing it because this is what this is what they do. Bane Conquest. Him and Graham Nolan teamed up to have like Bane go through this gauntlet, like where he becomes like this like badass himself who's like, uh, you know, fighting against a lot of different forces out there. A lot of fun. And of course, that again flew under the radar. My Sister Suprema, really cute uh, concept again with beautiful art. Beautiful art by Anthony Gonzalez Clark. Uh, and uh, on this one, a guy really, he's a kid. He wants to be a superhero. Mr. Yanafui. Sister's the one who has the powers. 
So he has Donald to train her Pui. to kind of be his like her like oracle in the background as she kind of navigates this. It's a lot of fun. Airboy number 51. Airboy was a great one Chuck Dixon did in the 80s. He brought this back with issue number 51. And of course, I wish that was continuing more, uh, but it was a beautiful issue and it was a wonderful testament to that great series. And then Militia, which is what you expect it to be. This came out from uh, a, a small comic book company, again, that flew under the radar, was out in comic shops, but was a beautiful and great book. So these are a wonderful books that Chuck's- I agree with you. And I will say this. Thank you, JDA, for giving this list of books that people can buy, read, uh, and enjoy and not support Eric July, <laughs> which is what you just did. There's no reason uh, to support Eric July. Uh, you can support Chuck Dixon much more directly by purchasing any of these books, which- the money will probably go into his pocket rather than Eric's pocket. I think that's an important thing that you need to understand. And it's not called, and none of this is called horseman. That's the other thing. Years. The guy is prolific. He writes uh, up a storm and he's working on your boy Zach's books. He's working on Vox Day's books. He's working on Eric's July's book. And he's actually working on other books too. Dick's Alfred not Dixon, y'all. Leave on Cade Properties, which is actually being developed as a TV series. I mean, Chuck is hitting it out of the park. You, you want to <sighs> knock Chuck, you can't do it on the writing level without being disingenuous at all. So I, can really it. I can do uh, it. I can, I can do it. J, uh, JDA, he's not perfect. I, I can knock him on the writing level every now and then. I can. Uh, you know, he's a, he's good. He's a good writer. But, uh, you know, to say you can't criticize him is not true. I don't like this landscape where everybody's... I did on Alpha other, Core uh, quite successfully, I pointed out. We would be doing a lot better if we were just standing together, producing indie comics, and really working together to take on Marvel and DC. Look, I've got a full universe of stuff. If you want... A full alternative. I've got it. Like Nobody's said, perfect. Go to my web store. I've got 12 graphic novels. I've got a subscribe star where I'm using that to produce the art. I've got a new Kickstarter in All Eyes on Ashley for a new book, which again, like I can't spoil it. Just trust me. It's freaking amazing. Absolutely love it on every level. And we're just getting started. So thank you guys for being there. And I hope that explains the Horseman thing from an actual comic perspective from somebody who reads comics and writes comics. A lot of people can just talk smack on the internet, but they have no idea what they're talking about. Well, uh, how about this? Uh, I'm somebody who's actually been published by uh, mainstream comic book companies like Marvel and DC, and I've been doing this for 31 years. You haven't. You're just a dude uh, who, uh, you know, worked for the uh, Federalist, something like that. Uh, and I will tell you, how about if you listen to me instead? I'm going to tell you uh, everything about this, and uh, you can listen to me. I, I Since we're pulling out our credentials here, let me sling out mine. Uh, JDA, Horseman isn't a stupid name. It's kind of awesome. It brings to mind Judgment Day in the end times. Uh, none of those names you listed are dumb either. He listed a bunch of names like, oh, you know, look at this, uh, Squirrel Girl. That's funny. Uh, Squirrel Girl is a funny name. The character is a little retarded right now. But when Steve Ditko, your favorite creator, created Squirrel Girl, same guy who created Spider-Man, cute idea, it rhymes. Stilt Man is a loser and he's fun. He's cannon fodder. You know, not a big deal, a burglar. Uh, the Thing is, what are you talking about? Thing is, The Thing is awesome. Man Thing is funny. Uh, Captain Cold, classic Silver Age perfectly fine. The Joker is a great name, no matter what. If you're thinking there's anything silly about that, I disagree. Green Hornet, a little bit vintage. Toad is just fine as well. Those are great code names. You said this is not an absurd name for comic. The only one I agree with you on is Green Hornet a little bit. Captain Cold's a little bit goofy, uh, you know, but it's okay. It's a DC Silver Age stuff. Everything else there is fucking based as hell. I'm not really sure what you mean. Uh, but uh, again, there, none of those names you listed are dumb. The problem isn't the name. The problem is the confusion about whether this character is evoking a vengeful man on horseback or if he himself is the horse. His costume suggests that he's the horse. That's funny. This is a problem. It's an easy fix. Get rid of that horse helmet, your friend Ethan. There you go. See that? And I'm 100% right, and he knows it and had to acknowledge it. Uh, what did he say? Something here. Fair analysis. Yeah, of course. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just a, a bit of confusing stuff that like, if anybody were actually asking questions and trying, they would have fixed this. You have to decide like, is this character horseman or horseman? And unfortunately, despite what Eric July is saying right now, he is horseman because he's wearing a mask. Now, if he's going to be horseman, 
he could be this. Uh, this would be a pretty kick-ass like centaur. He's horseman. Uh, that's fine. You could do that, and that looks really, really cool. Uh, or horseman right here. Fucking awesome. Can you imagine this guy cleaning up the streets of, uh, you know, uh, I picture this guy in the streets of Paris, France, like cleaning up the fucking uh, immigrants, like you have to go back. You, you with the machete, you, uulating with the fucking machine gun, you have to go back. Uh, that would be awesome. That'd be the shit, dude, right here, this guy. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, Horseman is a, a confused idea. That's all it is. It's just confusion. And because it's confusion, we can make fun of it and we can laugh, which is what we do. That's what we do around here. Uh, and no, Ethan, no, says, no, listen, listen to me. I'm 100% right about all this stuff. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Get this horse and pony show going, says Kitty Gargoyle. Uh, I see it too. The highest in that. No, I don't see it. Uh, Ellie, uh, CG for my PP, uh, says, is it ironic that Horseman has a tiny package? Uh, it would be, yeah. That'd be strange. It would eliminate one of the reasons for his name. Like you might say, is it because he's... No, it isn't. He's got a tiny PP. Stray Bean says, you're supposed to push Wabistics. Yeah. Uh, I got to get back to the Sopranos. 200 Watt Studio says, JDA is a zero. Cut them loose. He's, everybody's loose. I want you to understand uh, that I am a... I am a Ronin out here. Cultural wilderness. I'm on my own. I'm going to be honest with people. I like JDA, but what he's doing... I, I can see what he's... Everybody can see what he's doing. And in a way, it's funny. Um, but uh, every now and then, we'll push back. I'm glad he makes these videos so that are contrarian so I can sit there and just smack the ball right over the fence. That's like a little whew, baseball season's coming up. That's the one good thing that I talked to my dad about today. I said, Phillies are playing March 28th. He said, my, my mother wants me to come back to Jersey on Easter. Easter is, uh, uh, it is the weekend of opening day at, at, uh, at uh, for the Phillies. Um, are you kidding me? I said, Dad, I'll get tickets. I'll get great tickets. We'll go see the Phillies on opening day. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait for baseball season to come back. I'm going to get comic book cut down here when the Mets play the Phils. Comic book cut, I know you're watching right now. If you want to meet and just hang out and go see a baseball game together down here in Philly, uh, when your uh, beloved Mets face off against my fighting Phils, let's make that happen. Bagman for $5 says, that's for a signature and paid for blood, honey. Got a scratch cover with no signature for over 50 Rough to face on my budget, says Bagman. Bagman, that is a disgrace. Uh, and uh, we will have to repair that situation for you. You write to us at Cyberfrog Help, and you tell us the situation, and I will make that right. You're going to be happy with how I do it, too. I don't like that. I don't like sending people scratched books. Sometimes stuff like that gets by the boys in the warehouse. They're not in the warehouse right now. They're in my fucking, they're in my dining room right now. <laughs> they're in my piano room. Uh, yeah, getting books out. Uh, let me see. Sorry, but JDA is mocking you. Don't cut him slack. Um, okay. Uh, hold on a second here. We got a lot of uh, good. All right, wasn't Plastic Man one of the apostles? Yeah, he hung out with Jesus. He's been around for a long time. Albert Pike says, are we unhappy that JDA was quoted on the Medicare stream, EVS? What? I didn't know he was. Don't. By the way, don't think I'm bitter about anything. I'm, I'm sugary sweet. I, I don't have sour grapes. My grapes and my plums are succulent. Uh, don't think for a minute that I'm angry or jealous about anything. I'm doing fine. I'm uh, living in a big house, drawing my comic books scheming about my enemies, but don't think I'm bitter. Uh, you know, no, I am not unhappy that JDA was quoted on a Medicare stream. Son of a bitch. Why wasn't I quoted on a Medicare stream? Oh, I was. Lord Tatman says, uh, what is John's statue on, uh, stance on sisters who worship Satan and radically defend trans weirdos? Is John still a Christian? Well, we're going to avoid that topic. But I mean, I think if you asked him and he was honest, he would tell you that it disgusted him to his core. Uh, but 
nobody's asking him. Or he would say something like, well, they've repented and forgiven. No, you know, they haven't. Pigs don't eat it because they don't know how says. How about doing a review of one of JDA's comics? If you would like me to review one of JDA's comics tonight, <laughs> I do have one of his comic books. Uh, <laughs> I have one of his comic books right in that closet over there. Uh, I have his manga comic book. How much money should I ask to review one of JDA's comics? Uh, <laughs> I don't do this for free. And JDA should know if I'm going to review one of his comics, uh, it's just, it's for money. That's all it is. I'm doing this 100% for money. See the, like a $500 super chat there. Uh, I'm going to be teaching people how to do one point perspective. I'm, I'm going to do that because I love this chat and I I'm doing it for money. That's it. So if anybody wants me, <laughs> people are saying $5,000. So it doesn't happen. 2k sounds right. Starting now, if I'm going to review a girl goes back in time, whatever it is, a high school girl goes back in time. Uh, you don't have the Yotes to review it. Oh, I do. I'm a horse man. Starting right now, $2,000. I will review JDA's comic. And JDA, if I get $2,000, uh, you know that I'm going to have to do it. Uh, so uh, 500 bucks don't count. No, they don't count. We start over again. Uh, it's too... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god don't says peter d don't hmm. jda isn't worth 2k says uh kenneth toro well then we won't get to it but you know that's just what i'm saying that's where we're at okay uh boom ej and gabe partnership won't end well no promo says uh jose m um they're not partners. Gabe El Taib is his colorist and he's not doing a very good job. So uh, he's an employee of Eric July's. And uh, Eric July is already using other colorists for Alpha Core. Uh, I don't know if Gabe El Taib is, is, has been assigned any other work other than ISOM. Uh, and uh, that's concerning. Uh, why are we not allowed to criticize Eric July as he did, says Dreamcast9920. You're allowed. Of course you are. Twitter Watch Studio says, sorry, but JDA is mocking you. Don't cut him slack. I will not be mocked. Uh, Tamis Comics says, but I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. That's 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 11.3. Yeah, gotta watch out for these snakes. Didn't uh, don't JDA and Liam have an ongoing beef? Pun intended. Says Jose M. Yes, they do. Liam's in the chat right now. He's loving this. He likes it when I say bad things about uh, JDA. But I'm not saying bad things about JDA. I'm just criticizing him. Uh, old man Chris and putting him in his place a little, just a little. Yelling at clouds for five dollars says, "How much do you think Chuck is going to get for creating Horseman? Seeing as how it's created under the Ripperverse banner." I have no idea how that works. That's a great question. The structure of a creator owned kind of situation like that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, but it's an interesting question. BG illustrations for $10 says, uh, Scotch earth on X is pointing out the background and the horseman action picture is AI. I agree. Uh, it's not just the vanishing point, but the lamppost is way wrong and the mask looks weird. Uh, I disagree. Let me look at it again. P. Callen says, uh, horseman, we call him cowboys. Ryan Cannell says, is, uh, I'm sorry, Kyan Rennell, uh, says, is horseman's love interest called horse ma'am? It's a good question. Story points. Dumb username says, you're seeing the Phillies, another horse pun? Uh, Sean Bo Boaheen. Horseman should be called the horseman. Uh, needs to be on horseback, maybe a robotic one with weapons. A motorcycle would be fine too. 
Jose M says, review JDA's Andrew Tate parody book with Art by Smiller, then compared to the actual Andrew Tate comic, Le Mafal. Uh, <laughs> I got Andrew Tate's, I, I got both of Andrew Tate's comics here, by the way, both of them. So uh, at some point we'll go over those. David G says, am I the only one who noticed JDA used one of EJ's taglines at the end of his video? We're just getting started. Hmm. Charles Baker says, Horseman's real name is Clyde Dale Appaloosa. Uh, Crusader Joe says, I'd like to hear Vox Day's take on the sisters. I would too. Uh, Eric Huffle says, I DM'd you a video meme on Twitter. It has audio from Star Trek Four, so it might ding the stream. Bring on the review. Uh, Juan Wong. Okay, so that's starting. All right, here we go. Juan Wong says, giddy up, y'all. We got a review ride to ride to. Yeehaw. Uh, then we got Glass Machine, $5. Bats and spiders are creatures of the night. A horse is a beast of burden. Pony boy is lame and gay. So people are basically seeing it the way that I see it. Uh, it just, uh, yeah. I have more respect for Tate than July or JDA. Um, <laughs> I hate the internet so much. I hate and I love the internet. Uh Kim Frizz's uh, only cool ca horse character I can think of is 3030 from Marshall Brave Star. Hi, Comics Gate. Hello to you, too. Um, all right, guys. So let's talk about Horseman and let's get started with the show here, uh, the drawing show. And this is the part where it gets boring. So if you're somebody who uh, has no interest at all uh, in drawing comic books, uh, I invite you to. Uh, get a snack or something. I don't know. I'm going to teach you guys how to draw. Okay. Uh, just a few things. Um, I'm going to teach you one point perspective today. Uh, it was pointed out. This is the, uh, this is the illustration, uh, in question, uh, that was done by, uh, Joe Bennett. Currently it's being called currently there are accusations about this, uh, that it is uh, AI. Let me take a closer look. I really don't think so. Uh, I can see pencil in here. See the fire here? I can see pencil. Uh, and this looks, uh, yeah, I mean, this this is not AI. This uh, this all looks drawn to me. See this? Eh. Yeah, I can see. I can see the page under. I see a line right here. I, I don't know if you can see it, but this is part of the uh, the blue line for the page. So this is actually hand drawn uh, on uh, on paper. So I reject this notion. A lot of people looking for conspiracies. Joe Bennett is not somebody who is uh, using AI, uh, or or somebody who we should accuse of using AI. Uh, I did not catch this. I looked at the uh, I looked at the piece and I said, "Oh yeah, that's nice." Um, but Dan Lawless, uh, who lately has become an amazing critic. Oh, look at this. Matt Six Bar goes, look at the tangent on the top of the foot. You know what a tangent is? All right, I'm going to teach you guys about the finger to JDA here. It's a good video, JDA. Thank you for making that. Um, hold on a second here. Okay, here we go. This is what a tangent is. Uh, whenever possible, uh, you, you all right, you're, you're calling this a tangent here. I would kind of agree with you. Whenever possible, you don't want to have uh, this foot line here touch this line. That's a tangent. It, it disrupts. It looks... Uh, lines should break lines. So this foot should actually be moved forward a little bit and should be breaking the line of this building, the top of the building. That's what uh, Matt Barr is saying there. He's saying that the fact that the foot is really, really close to touching the line of that building uh, is a tangent. Uh, and uh, it is... it. It doesn't feel good to look at. It, it's it bothers you. You know what I mean? Um, all right, Matt uh, John Malin goes crazy over these tangents. You really can't stand them. All right, here's the situation. What we have here is we've got fake two point perspective. Uh, actually, it's fake three point perspective. But Dan Lawless is calling this out as a one point perspective that is wrong, uh, and uh, he is right. I didn't realize this. I wasn't looking at it very closely. Um, but these buildings are not all meeting back uh, at the same vanishing point. Vanishing point should be right about here. Let me see. Right about here uh, where his shoulder is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right about here. 
Um, but these two buildings down here at his feet don't aren't doing that. They're not a uh, they're not in perspective, and because they're not in perspective, they seem to be leaning. One uh, the building right in between his feet there is leaning backwards, and this building right here is leaning this way. Um, that's not the way perspective works, uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, show you really quickly here. One point perspective. This is actually two point perspective. There is another vanishing point uh, that is right between his feet. Let me see. I'll show you. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, right down here, it'd be off off the page a little bit here. There's another uh, vanishing point. Uh, so it's a it's. I like this perspective. I like uh, using this myself. Um, but uh, I don't know what Joe's doing. He got he got this point right. These two buildings right here are just wrong. Uh, let me see. How can I do this? Uh, hide current comment. This and then this is the way to go. This is my paper here. Uh, look what I've done. I've actually put lead in my pencil. Uh, instead of blue, uh, blue non-photo blue uh, lead, I've got actual lead in here so that I can draw so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm prepared to do a drawing class for you. Um, all right. We start out, this is one point perspective. And I want you guys to understand that one point perspective is very simple. Um, I want you to think about buildings in this, uh, in this context, because drawing like something like New York City makes perspective really, really easy to understand. Uh, you know that when uh, looking at a skyline or something like that, you know, you've got a, a building Let's just say this is one of the Twin Towers uh, right before the uh, fucking Muslims knocked it down. Here's the other one uh, right here. Uh, this is the this would be the horizon line at this point, okay? This is where our eye line is if we're, from this point of view. Here's my head looking at the Twin Towers, okay? Uh, here is uh, here's an airplane here coming in. Uh, Hello, Akbar. Blah blah blah. So they've got a different view of it, but I'm down here watching the 9/11 uh, event happen. This is my, this is the horizon line. The horizon line uh, always kind of meets right where your eye line is, the viewer, the cameraman's eye line is. So wherever the camera is, wherever we're looking at it uh, from, uh, that is that is the horizon line. Okay, it's very simple. So uh, as we were looking at that image before, let me put this back on uh, right here. Uh, we are on the ground, okay? Our her, our eye line is right about where his chest is because he's about to land on us. So we're looking up. We're on the ground looking up at him. Uh, and therefore, the horizon line uh, is uh, all the way up uh, near where his chest is. Okay, let me see here. Let me put this back. Uh, all right. Or actually, no, no, no. The uh, vanishing point is. I'm sorry. The vanishing point is all the way up here. All right. The horizon line is much lower. Um, all right. I got to get used to this. All right. So here's what to do. Uh, we're going to start. We're going to start with a, a horizon line all the way down here. And we're going to. Using our ruler here. Uh, we are going to draw a line that is perpendicular, like so. See that? I should do that darker. Okay. We're gonna put a vanishing point right up here, one single vanishing point. And then we're gonna put one right down here below the horizon line here. And the horizon line itself, we're gonna go ahead and we're just going to rule out parallel lines. This is a perspective grid, real quick one. These rulers are really great for this reason. You can kind of uh, easily uh, make sure the lines are parallel by seeing through. Um, and just kind of stacking the lines up. Okay. 
Okay. Um, now we're going to take this one line here, this one uh, vanishing point, and we're going to just fan it out like this. have to draw as dark as I can. I'm looking at the screen and I can see even this pencil is like almost invisible. It makes a great noise. I like it. And then we're going to um, also fan out from here. This is like, um, like I said, this is like two point perspective, but kind of turned on its side and it actually becomes kind of an artificial three point perspective. But I used to use this all the time uh, as a way of creating excitement uh, in a character's uh, arrival. So it's nice to see Joe Bennett doing it too. One point perspective is usually used. It's like the simplest form of perspective, but it's usually used to create, like I said, a dynamic excitement. Uh, it has thrust to it. It's coming at you. Uh, and this is, um, you know, this is important for scenes like this. Okay, so going back, you can see the grid now. You can see that our buildings are all leading up to this point here. So we can already kind of sketch in buildings if we want to. You know, we can uh, sketch in a building here. If we want to, we can already see the windows. You know, if we want to throw those in there as well. All of this is already there for us to, uh, to work from. We use this line to be the top of the building. Uh, here's another building right down here. Let me see what Joe did here so we can kind of copy uh, what he was trying to do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he's got this building um, right on the uh, right-hand side of the uh, the page. Um, so uh, let's see. wish I could do this quicker. He's got this right here. This building, and you can see the windows in it. See, already you can see that, like, we're looking up at the buildings here. Uh, we've got an enormous building here with windows. Everything is already here for you to use. All the lines are already there. And really, it's just a matter of uh, making choices now about what it's going to be. All right, let's see. Another building there. Now, Joe's problem was he had this big building here. He had this big building here, but then, and then he had his character kind of coming down. Here's the character sketching him in there. Let's do a very rough kind of thing. Here's his big foot in your face. Following the following the action of the lines that you've created, that you put down here, you kind of work the figure into the perspective as well. Um, Joe had this building here, and he had this building here, but what he forgot was uh, to, when he put the buildings behind uh, these two buildings, uh, they were not connecting to this vanishing point anymore. He kind of lost that. Um, the terrific and great Dan Lawless pointed that out. Let me see. Let me look at what he uh, posted there. Uh, right, right here. Show this tab instead. Uh, can you see it? Here we go. All right. So you can see. Um, this is thumbs down. You can see that there are multiple weird vanishing points here. 
um, that would basically make it so that the, the buildings that are all parallel coming up from the ground would be leading to different points in space. Uh, his second image is how it should have been done. And as you can see, the buildings in the background are just random. They're, they're, not, they're not connected to that one point here um, in this one point perspective grid. Uh, he lost that for some reason. I'm not sure why. It's a very strange thing. I think maybe he just kind of uh, tried to fake it real quick, but you don't need to. You've got your one point in, of perspective there, uh, and you can just kind of um, you can just kind of use that. All right, let me see. So now that we know, we can just use this right here, and we can we can draw as many little buildings back here as we want to. Here's one right here, and then we have this point here, so that we can draw the other side of the building, right like this. Uh, we can put another building here if we want to. Uh, we can put buildings that are taller back here. We can get real, uh, you know, Michael Golden and, and start drawing all kinds of different buildings in the background here of varying heights using our perspective grid to really build up the thrust of the character that's coming down at us. Uh, so that is uh, that is one point perspective. It's actually two point perspective, uh, et cetera. But do um, uh, you guys have questions about it? You understand? So this is just a simple use of one point, one point perspective uh, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, solve the, uh, uh, the problem that uh, Joe Bennett ran into there. And it's a kind of a strange problem for a, uh, of his um, years uh, to have run into. One point perspective is really, really simple. Uh, and again, it, it, it was the right thing to use in that case to, to create the impact of the character coming down uh, at him. But yeah, it just uh, was not done very well. And now you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I am so pissed off <laughs> at the Batman thing. I'm actually going to draw Batman. And I want to know if you guys want to draw Batman with me. I'm just going to do a very simple uh, Batman drawing, Batman's head. Uh, and um, this is something that I might have done at a convention uh, that we will... Uh, doesn't uh, Eric have an... Wait, doesn't Eric have an editor or an art director? Yeah, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I Honestly, I don't know what happened. It was really, really strange. It's a small thing. It's not the end of the world. You can pull those buildings out and just kind of fix them. Uh, but it was... Uh, yeah, it was peculiar. I haven't done this in a while. I think I'm going to put on some music. Do you guys care? Do you guys want to sit here and talk to me while I draw a little bit of uh, a little bit of Batman for the first time in like seven years? I used to draw Batman. Used to be a thing. Uh, Victor says uh, I didn't see nothing wrong with it, but I'm naive. Well, it, it was good. It was pretty good, but there was one drawing mistake, and people do need to learn to use one point perspective. Uh, if they can. Um, hmm. Play a little of this here in the background. Wait, uh, uh, Batman. Uh, get out your pencils and let's begin. We can draw a big Batman face. And we're going to start by uh, drawing kind of a nice oval shape here, uh, like so. I wish I could get some more light here. I would love to get a better, if I could get a better studio environment uh, in order to uh, to draw on camera, I would definitely do this more often. Do I even know how to, do I even remember how to draw Batman? I guess we're going to, we're going to find out together. I hope I don't embarrass myself in front of you guys. Last thing that I want to do uh, is embarrass myself in front of you guys. A lot of good artists watching right now, I'm sure. We're going to draw a line for the eyes here. We're going to find the nose somewhere in between the uh, the eye line uh, and the chin. And then we're going to divide it in half again and just kind of put in uh, the line for where the mouth is going to be. And listen, at this point in time, uh, you know, I'm not really uh, settling on anything. I'm defining a shape. I'm just finding exactly what it is that I want to do here. I'm scribbling around. I'm trying to uh, figure out what it is, how it's going to be. Uh, no clear ideas uh, yet about how it's going to end. We're just uh, we're just figuring it out. We're just drawing. We're scribbling, and that's what pencils are for. Pencils are meant for this. So nobody should worry about making a mistake just yet. 
just start to feel around like this. You see what I'm doing? Feeling around. <laughs> Picture pages with EVS. Let's find the top of his head here. And we're going to go, I'm going to do this pretty fast, I think. It's still going to seem slow and uh, agonizing. Um, but we're going to go as fast as we can so it's not too boring here. Uh, for you guys. See, I'm feeling out the uh, the nose, like on Patrick Thomas Parnell. And I'm finding the, uh, the shape of the eyes and the cowl. Should I put a bullet hole in the center of his head from fucking Harley Quinn? I don't think I'm going to do that. Find these eyes. And just sort out. Just sort it out here. What kind of expression do I want him to have? Yeah, same expression that he always has, I guess. And Batman is uh, always covered in shadow. So we want to do that. We want to find out and make a decision about where the light source is going to be. Let's go ahead and make it coming from this way. I don't do this, guys. I'm deeply involved in my own stuff. I'm deeply involved in Rainbow the Brute. Girthy Stallions right now. Cyberfrog 3. Uh, Red Extermination. And it has been a while since I've drawn any of these corporate characters, but damn it, they pulled me out of retirement with that stupid video game. I must rescue. I feel like I'm rescuing them. And join along with me. You see what I'm doing? I'm somebody who likes Batman with long, tall ears. Uh, Dr. Jeebus says, Bulb, get a better light for drawing on stream. Well, don't worry. This is just the pencils, all right? We're going to do a pass. We're going to do pen. We're going to do all kinds of uh, crazy stuff. We're going to do it together. And you guys are going to see. But I did get a lead pencil, at least to start with. Got a microphone that's casting a shadow. I got this. This doesn't make it any better. <laughs> that's it. But yeah, I would like to uh, find a better method. I got to go see what Dave Finch does for his drawing channel. Um, you know. Take this up. By the way, thank you for twenty dollars. I appreciate it. And we want to have his cape here. Let's have his chest exposed so that we can see the bat symbol on it. Let's just remember that he does have ears that are hidden behind there. So I always want to go in there and beef up the uh, side of his head, his neck a little bit as I go. Um, all right, good enough. You know, not everything has to be perfect all the time. Uh, Jorby Jimson says, uh, are there any artistic reasons for doing one point perspective with several points? Like if I were drawing Dr. Strange with the distorted view work that, you know, no, 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 no. That a weird horror look. One point perspective is one point perspective. It's going to have everything that is a parallel line leading back to one single point. Do you see the uh, poster on my wall here? Do you, do you see this right here? See those lines, even though they look like they're coming together as a V, they're actually parallel. You know that. That's one point perspective. They are converging back into one single point that if I were drawing this scene would be right over there, right where I'm pointing. And everything else is going along with it. That poster as well. Everything that's on this wall, on this plane, that is parallel is converging to one single point. And the same thing with this wall. This is actually two point perspective. This wall here, everything on the wall is parallel, but it's converging back to one point that's way over here. That's two point perspective. In order to maintain that kind of a structure of reality, you've got to use one single point or two points. You got to decide what it is. Two point perspective is usually staring into a corner like this or staring at the edge of a corner coming out of you, out at you. Um, and that's why, why you have a two point perspective. One point perspective uh, would be if, um, 
uh, you were staring at a wall and the, uh, you know, staring at a, a wall and then the other walls were coming out of you like this. Um, Doug35 says, EVS used to play keyboard streams. Uh, this was ever what he wanted, but now it's on. What do you mean? Uh, Apple Pit says, uh, do you do any airbrushing EVS? I love to airbrush. <laughs> not, not since I was a kid, no. I have an airbrush in the next room, but I haven't used it in a while, to be honest with you. I'm busting out a ballpoint pen for some reason. I just feel comfortable with it. Now let's see if we can find Batman in here, shall we? Are you guys drawing with me? Are there people in the audience right now who are feeling inspired? Feel like trying their hand at drawing Batman as well? I hope so. I'd like to think so. See that at the top of his eye there. ID Crisis says, uh, how to draw the Comics Gateway, episode one. Hmm. There's one eye there. get Dan Lawless in here. And again, it's very much like feeling around. Don't feel like you have to stay in one spot just uh, move around, feel the drawing, just feel it out. You can make, uh, you know, if you if you don't make any, uh, you know, big decisions uh, right away, then you can make changes as you go. You can certainly like correct things. So just kind of doing bits like this, we're just moving around. We haven't really made any big decisions yet with the drawing. Is this satanic or is this Russian? Can't really tell. Uh, shout out to Dear Man the Holy, former Ripaverse employee, Isom Enjoyer, blocked by Eric July for saying trot differently. Eric July can't take jokes, but he could definitely take criticism, guys. That's Sport Nugget for $10. I didn't know that. That's fucking crazy. Eric's just on a blocking spree. I try not to block. I have blocked a couple of people, but I usually give them a warning first. Feel free to say whatever you want to say, but like at some point, it's enough. At some point, shut up. It takes a lot to get me to block you. Finding his cheekbones here, his jawline. And I'm just scribbling it in. That's all we're doing. We're just sketching it in. We are making some decisions now.
I'm sorry, guys. I'm here. Got a $20 super chat from Dr. Jeebus. Bulb, get a better light for drawing. Oh, that's okay. I read that one. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I like these Brian Boland, like Batman eyebrows, so those kind of arches that he does. I think they look really cool. I can't help it. I'm, you know, I'm stuck in the 80s when it comes to Batman in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't like the, uh, I don't like too much of the, um, the extra lines on his suit. Kind of, a, kind of pretty much in agreement with uh, Brian Boland. Put in a couple of shadows here, scribble them in. Bucktooth Batman says uh, John Porton. <laughs> you think he's got buck teeth? I'm gonna put 
on my glasses now. Now we're getting a little bit more uh, into this. There we go. Oh, it's all so clear now. So we're putting in primary shadows right now. Primary shadows are just heavy blacks. Um, so you just choose where those go. Those, those are primary shadows. And we select those and then we can kind of draw out of those. I'm gonna give them a nice cleft chin here. Okay, let's just start to draw out of these primary shadows. Um, with lines that are all kind of going in the same direction initially here.
By the way, if you're drawing Batman with me tonight, I want to see on Twitter. Make sure to take a picture, scan it, send it over. And let's, uh, let's just have fun. Drawing a happy little uh, scowl line here. Hello to you guys. Wilbur Force Wooster, thanks for twenty dollars. He says just to prove you get super chats when you draw too. Well, thank you. It's kind of you. Appreciate it.
<laughs> Shout out to Finatra for this uh, excellent piece of work. This has to be like uh, the best Eric July song in a long time. Love that song. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. We got super chats. Uh, how do you draw with such chutzpa? Like, no way am I going to make a mistake. You draw like you're slapping your D down on the table like a boss. Hey, he's an opinionated news guy. Big uh, boy Elroy says, thanks for discussing why some things work and others don't. Like the perspective on that horseman drawing or drawing faces. Also love that big bad booty daddy. Uh, your Batman looks like he's watching PTP's videos. <laughs> He looks like Eric July meeting PTP today. A little bit. I'm working with this ballpoint pen. I've, you know, just figured it would be easier. A little bit more loose. A little more scribbly. Kind of fun. <laughs> so stupid.
who are living up to the title of our uh, channel today. I have not done a drawing stream or anything like it in a long time. You have to forgive me if I'm a little rusty. But it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to just pick up a big pen and just say, fuck it. Let's go. Let's just mess around and have some fun. It's a little bit scribbly, guys. <laughs> There's a drawing done out of rage.
Go back to the 90s. Hell yeah. There we go. That's the first Batman that I've drawn uh, in years. In absolute years. Um, a little rough. It's not bad, though, I guess. What do you guys think? Is it okay? Let me check with you guys in the chat. It felt good. i got to say, it just felt good. I know I, I was quiet through most of it and stuff. I'm sorry for that, but... Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was kind of nice to do that. I enjoyed it. Um, just a good way of just kind of like, you know, scribble. You know, feels nice to do that every now and then. I'm, I usually work with such precision. I'm very very careful about what I do. So just being able to get in there and just kind of fuck around and uh, not care too much about precision is really fun. Um. Uh, all right, not enough crayon. <laughs> Thank you. Let me see what the super chat say. Thanks, guys. Um, let's see. Giddy up. We all got a review to ride too. Yeehaw. Uh, bats and spiders are creatures of the night. A horse is a beast of burden. Pony boy is lame and gay. Um, oh, I read this one. Boy, 
That name is really confusing. How much for you to watch Zack Snyder's JL to review? Even Doomcock said it's flawless and he hates Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. At least the last 45 minutes. It's epic. You don't have to pay me to do that. Would you like me to review that movie? I, I, I guess I'd... It's just agony to have to watch it. Uh, Exa Moon says, I think the Joe Bennett art is uh, 2.5D. Almost 3D. Victor says, I didn't see nothing wrong with it, but I'm naive. Dear man. Oh, I read this one. Ah, uh, Arugata Sensei, you teach good karate, says uh, <laughs> Wong. Uh, Dr. Jeebus says, get a better bulb. I will. Thank you. Uh, this a uh, four. Wait. This a 4K cover? Real loose? Is it Batman? Maybe. Victor, no, this is a sketch. I wouldn't charge $4,000 for, well, maybe I would. Jorby Jimson says, are there any artistic reasons for doing one point perspective? Oh, I read this one. I think they're out of order. Um, yeah, I do have an airbrush in the next room. I haven't airbrushed in a while. Uh, Neon Knight Rider says, why are you drawing a talking head? We want a full figure. You want me to do a full figure? Uh, well, that's interesting. Maybe I will. Firebird Newt says, if you ever decide to sell drawing classes for online comics, I would buy them all. Uh, you are clear and to the point, which makes it easy to learn. Thank you, Firebird Newt. Apple Pits is Mike Mayhew. He does airbrush, says Victor. Victor, you're confusing me tonight. Uh, oh, I read this one too. ID Crisis says, uh, how to draw the comics gateway, episode one. Main struck Cabby Davis is ballpoint pen, huh? Just like Anne Frank's diary. <laughs> Wonder Girl 60 says, I really love your drawing stream, Z. Thank you. Thank you, Wonder Girl 60s. Uh, let me see. Oh, wow. This reminds me of PTP or Vic King art. Just kidding. Uh, that's Victor. Uh, Benton Busfield says, I've always thought you had a unique Batman style, especially the way you draw his cape. Uh, what are the current Comic Skate Arena plans? All I know is Elephant, says G Dash. Right now, that's it. I don't have uh, another Comic Skate Arena plan yet, another book yet. When they come along, though, you know, uh, I will, uh, uh, I will let you know. Victor says, "Who trained you? PTP, Vic King? Just kidding, uh, man. It'd be sad if you could only draw like this now." Says Victor, uh, one ninety nine. A uh, super wacky rabbit says, "Funny, I saw the pic of EJ and the little dude at the con." Says Miles Morales with Dan Slott blocked. Uh, oh shit. Let me see. <laughs> Crusader Joe says, Ethan, subtle way of changing trash cast into a draw stream. Hey, fatty, we want drama. Listen, ID Crisis says, ballpoint pen is so cozy to draw with. Isn't it what we all started with as kids in school drawing uh, on the desk? Uh, let me see. Uh, Wilberforce Wooster uh, says, just to prove, thank you for $20, just to prove you get super chats when you draw too. Uh, Monopoly Loser says, uh, I've had a crappy couple of weeks. There's something about you drawing Batman that helps lift my mood. It's likely going back to simpler times. Yeah, Opinionated News Guy says, how do you draw with... Okay, I read this one as well. Thank you. Uh, Big Boy Elroy says, thanks for discussing why some things work and others don't. Chris Topher says, your Batman looks like he's watching PTP videos. Cars and Dev says, I'd love to see superheroes done in the style of old masters like Rembrandt, Michelangelo, uh, Titian. Uh, know if anyone has ever done that. Well, you know what? With Now, uh, now with uh, AI, I think that would be pretty easy to do. Uh, Jags Dino God says, notice you're inking your lines almost like you're sketching. Does that mean trying to keep one constant line, not lifting your pen is a good idea? Uh, I just, you know, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, tonight I'm just kind of angrily scribbling for fun. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, no, I wouldn't say that not lifting your pen is a good idea. Dexy's Kessel Runner says, Ripa has a horse, man, but you're the one with the cult following. I mean, cult following, as in we are in a cult and we love it. That's very clever. Uh, Robert Romano says 2.5K for a draw stream has to be a record. Congrats. Um, let me see. Uh, GC all the way says Snyder's DC was dark and ugly. You can't say Snyder's films are ugly as an artist. I just don't believe you. They're visually amazing. Come on. I meant ugly of spirit. Uh, I don't mean they're visually ugly. Um, Apple Pitt says, can you mimic other artists? Well, who's your best? I don't really mimic anyone, no. Uh, Barb Rogers uh, uh, gifted a membership. Thank you very much. Cars and Depth says, when do you know a drawing is finished? Um, it never really is. You could keep going forever, but it's uh, you you kind of put it down. You say, that's enough. Michael Ferrer says, I never had the makings of a varsity athlete, but I can gain some drawing tips from EVS. Loving these lessons. Yakuse says, drawing streams is how I came to know your channel. You drew Darth Vader with your foot and then sang about licking butter. I was hooked ever since. 
Uh, let me see. Sorry, Larry Shungai put your drawing to Saint, uh, shame, says Kyan Rinnell. Uh, Rofo, wow, uh, for an orange super chat. I don't know what THB is, but thank you. Uh, Rainbow the Brute backer 4979. Thought I had backed it long ago, but I guess I didn't. I wonder if Eric July had to sign an agreement with the ministry to not engage in hater battles in 24, and that's why he won't name you and moves differently. Almost certainly, yes. Uh, Blast Radius says, Horseman cover had other problems than just the perspective. The buildings in the background, in my opinion, look too dark, clashing with the character. It looks like depth wasn't taken into consideration. My eye was jumping around too much. Uh, 701 says, love your JDA Horseman commentary. Ha ha. Uh, Batman, when he heard uh, the DC shows off his, wait, Batman, when he heard DC shows off his bat dong. Uh, yeah. Uh, Michael David, thanks for $3. Jack say says, Batman rocking that. I'm not mad, son. Just disappointed. Look, uh, opinionated news guy goes, how much for that? <laughs> uh, Flady one says, just heard back from KK at Disney. She said, uh, she'd do it again, but make a chick make, wait, just heard back from KK at Disney. She said, do it again, but make it a chick and make her lame and gay. Steve Roberts says, I'm confused. I thought you were supposed to start with the nose and build around it, make it bright red and put marks on it. Like it was grilled. <laughs> Uh, Batman looks disappointed here. Does he? Did he just read ice on? Batman is always sad. Uh, Jim Satala says you need to add that Batman sketch to the current auction. It's already up to two seventy five. Got those hats today. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, I'll put this up on eBay. Gab says uh, YouTube says membership badges three to four year are options. Uh, oh, can I do that now? All right, I'll come up with some. Carbon Heart says that was therapeutic to watch. Thanks, E. Well, I appreciate it. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's fun. I, I haven't, I haven't done that in a while. Uh, I'm very busy. Like when I, when I sit down and draw, um, it's for a purpose. Uh, and, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on my comics all the time. I don't really do, uh, these live stream, uh, draw streams, uh, too much anymore, but maybe I will, and I'll get comfortable with it a little bit because again, that's what this channel is meant to be. Uh, and, uh, I like it. It is fun. Where is my Colt Fez? Oh, let me see. Grumpy old uh, Ninjara Ninja Kentaro says, I hate all Zack Snyder crap. Uh, Jeremiah uh, M says, my parents are dead. Nice drawing, EBS. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do that. By the way, Margaret Miracle. Yeah, I found six more monocles. I think I'm going to uh, throw monocles into uh, packages. By the way, here's the, uh, here's the drawing. If I actually like hold it up. It looks good. I like it. It's not bad. Uh, I'll put this up on eBay if uh, at 99 cents. If anybody would like to get it, uh, they can uh, bid on it. I'll do that after the show is over. Um, but I want to thank you guys for hanging out tonight and watching. I know this was kind of a short one. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, talk about Horseman a little bit. Uh, <laughs> color it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I do have six monocles. Uh yeah, let me see. Hold on a second. Batman's ear should be casting a shadow. Oh, this is true. Batman's ear should be casting a shadow over the top of his head. A uh, nice shot. Oh, you want me to do that? Let's do that. Hold on a second here. I agree with you about that. I think that's true. Uh, let's uh, well, let's go ahead and do that. That was boring. Says so job of the hut or job of the uh, cuck. All right. Yeah, it should. We should do this right here. Uh, and then sort of feather it out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Perfect. He's got a nice shadow on his head from his ear. Uh, let me see. Wow, $10 super chat from... Uh, where am I? Here I am. $10 super chat. From uh, Getar, get a Robo Shinwon. Uh, you screwed up his left jaw. Why is it curved in more and curved uh, in on the left and the right? The drawing looks skewed. Flip it on the light board. Be a pro and fix it. Nice job, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I did the best I could. Uh, might not be perfect. Who knows? Matt Grendel says that was fun. Okay, I read that one. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Hold on. Let me flip it and look and see. Uh... As I hold it up to the light. No, it looks good. <laughs> You're wrong. It actually works. You have me scared there. No, no, no. It's fine. It, but always hold your drawings to a mirror. Sometimes it's hard. I'm working on a flat surface. 
can get a little bit goofy, but uh, I actually made it work out pretty nicely, actually. Um, all right, guys. Uh, with that, I think I'm going to let you go. I don't know who else is streaming right now, but go find a nice Comics Gate stream and, and join these guys. Um, I will be back tomorrow for Comics Gate Kings. I'm going to try to do Comics Gate Kings. I know I've missed two weeks in a row, um, but tomorrow, it's just Mondays are hell. I'm telling you, Mondays, there's work, there's stuff to do. Uh, and uh, it's um, it gets complicated, but I, I'm going to do it. I will definitely do it uh, tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Uh, I will see you then. Take care. He's a power <laughs> dude that's that's fucking punching this chick. Just off of the book alone, you can assume he has some kind of enhanced strength and like flight. For sure. There's there's artwork of him out there, like dude. He probably flight. has power. Hello. He's stalking. He's stalking. He stuck. I don't know this nigga. You went to try to go whoop someone's ass, and just because you lost the fight didn't mean you attempted to get in the fight. So he does have superpowers? Nonetheless. 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 Absolutely not. We all good over here, homie. So if someone sees something and they go, this seems like a scam or fraud, and they contact a charity, that's something they can do? Yeah, they can do that. For sure. Are people allowed to investigate a perceived fraud? You, 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 you. you. What did I, what it is, what it is that I am saying is that I, we gave them as a company, we gave them money, right? Hello! You, 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 you. I don't know this nigga! I was delivering a book to the charity $17. It was not just $17, and I wish you were people would say that. That was not the average cost of the book. What was the average cost? The average cost, I think, came out to some closer to like $13 or so. dollars. Did you solicit a book, a charitable donation for a book for $17, and the actual cost was $13? That's not what it is that I said. I'm saying that that's, that's the average. That's what you said. Oh, it's the incredibly stupid woman. He's stalking. He's stalking. He's stalking. I don't know this nigga. Nonetheless. 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 Absolutely not. It doesn't even fucking matter. You know why, Nick? Because we gave them money. Don't show up at people's businesses, man. Don't you know the premise? He is going to get aired. And Maggie, and yeah, we would be in the right and fucking text if we did. You Marvel copying people. You came to my house. Remember that, Eric? That makes you a whole ass nigga, right? I'm going to need a lot more than $3.7 million to do that. You got a partner. That's your boy. Have you asked him about I think why yeah, 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 Karen? Kind of out of the shoulder in the road. And then he got his ass aired the fuck out. And this morning you woke up. Begged me for show. I think, I think you're dramatizing what's happening. Like a weirdo. Why did I um, go back to the club? I don't want to do this. Hello. He's just trying to find smoke where, uh, where there's no fire. Maybe fuck with their business. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe they would contact the uh, contact charity to try to find it. Nonetheless, 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 absolutely not. So the more money it is that they got, we all good over here, homie. Sure. What do you think the point was? And we know that it is that he tried to do that. How would one do that? It is what it is. It is what it is. What did I? What it is? That's what it is that I'm saying. He kept talking down. You marvel copying piece of shit. You haven't accomplished anything in the space it is. What did I what did it moonwalk on the dead careers of comic pros? How would one do that? So he does have superpowers? He probably has power. He stunned it. I don't know this nigga. Comic books weren't selling uh, that well, and there was this thing called pencils down.